Howdy, Oaks. Before we get started, today we just want to let you know that this episode of Bacon and Eggs is brought to you by you. We want to build this thing to be as big as it can be. More episodes, merchandise, events, giveaways, you name it. But we can't do it alone. If you enjoy this episode or any of our episodes, head on over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash bacon and eggs. And consider checking out some of the great reward tiers we've set up over there or making a donation of any kind. We want to keep this podcast free and available for everyone. So if you have a couple of bucks to spare, anything goes a long way. And we can really use your help to make this podcast the best it possibly can be. So thank you for donating and thank you even more for listening. Howdy, Yokes, and welcome back to Bacon and Eggs. I'm Tyler Carlin. And I'm still Ethan Edge Hill. And we're coming to you once again from a long, long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. So grab your dad's lightsaber. And forget you ever owned a droid. Because we've got a special guest today. For the adventures of Luke Starkiller as taken from the Journal of the Wills, Saga 1, The Star Wars. Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope. And joining us, joining us for the first time on Bacon and Eggs is Carrie Pegg from Nerdium Podcast. Carrie, who, uh, who are you? Uh, well, I would be one of two co-hosts, co-hosts of uh, Nerdium. Uh, me and my uh, buddy Matt, we like to get together and talk about all things nerd. You know, TV, movies, video games, all the kind of stuff that we were uh, ridiculed in high school for, basically. Same, same, for sure. Beautiful. Tyler, you said re- first time ever on Bacon and Eggs as if we've had a repeat <laughs> guest. <laughs> we, we, I guess we have not. You've been on the show a few times, Ethan. Actually, I guess... You're the most consistent yeah. cast member. I, I've been on every episode. I missed I missed one. Um, well, Carrie, we're super, super happy to have you here. We're going to ask you a couple basic interview questions here in just a minute. Um, but first, let's go over some stats on Star Wars A New Hope. I find there's an inverse relationship on our uh, all-time board with when the movie was released and where it stacks up. For the most. Basically, if we do older movies, they tend to rank higher. And I don't think it's because they mo- used to make movies better. I think it's because we pick and choose from like a range of 30 years of movies the best possible ones well that and don't you find that looking in the past you kind of got those rosy glasses going on when you're looking in the back there absolutely you completely look past some of the stupid stuff in this movie i mean i i forgive a lot of stuff for for a long time movies well like like even in this movie it, by the way this is obviously a spoiler show this movie is fifteen thousand days old so i'm not gonna feel bad about it uh, uh, but like in uh, one of the big complaints for the last jedi is that like physics doesn't work that way in outer space but nobody's watching this movie like well if you bumped into darth vader he wouldn't go spiraling off like that well the, not... well the one thing that kills me like when you when you move into like the physics of movies like i gotta tell you there's not too many movies where i've ever seen and been like you know what that science is spot on spot right. on science good <laughs> for you well done science fiction i think it's like <laughs> really spot on the science <laughs> it's like the martian and that's it the Martian, there's no gravity problems. What are you talking about? In the book, the gravity on Mars is not as strong. Right. I'm not seeing so, a problem here. In the, mo- <laughs> in the movie, he just walks around like it's a normal planet. He does that on... It's it's not like that much not strong. I don't know. Anyway. Just, anyway, this movie was released May 25th, 1977. That was 15,064 days ago. Uh, way, way before Ethan and I was, was alive. Way before. Way before. Uh, now, now. Let's not make you feel too old on this one. That's that's really not appreciated. <laughs> Uh, but it had, uh, I guess, an $11 million budget, uh, which is, it seems low. Um, so these are original, this time, I just, to, to, to point out the contrast here, because I couldn't find an accurate uh, inflation budget figure. Okay. Um, I just went with the original figure. So it was, it cost $11 million to make, and its worldwide gross was $775.3 million. That was in 1977 dollars? That was in 1977 dollars. That's so much money. <laughs> yeah, inflation figures put it about $2.2 billion. Just like people paying for tickets to see this movie. Yes, worldwide gross domestic or worldwide gross box office dollars. So people paying that, for tickets to buy the movie. That is insane. But people did love it. Uh, I got a 93% critic rating on Rotten Tomatoes, 96% audience rating, and a 90 on Metacritic, which is not our best. Second movie. best. Second best. Second best. Mm. Second best. Uh, it it was beaten out, Carrie, by a, a Monty Python and the Holy Grail last week. Oh, uh, that is that is a solid movie, though. I mean, yeah, I mean, you can't argue. You know, that. I, yeah. just, I got a 93 on. Metacritic. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to get all up in arms about that one. Yeah. So normally I have a negative review for these movies and well, not normally and recently I've had a negative review for these movies, but I read six or seven negative reviews on this movie and none of them are any good uh, because they were all written in approximately 2014 by people who essentially just said, it's not as good as my dad said it was. <laughs> oh, 
Those people. So, uh, from what I can gather <laughs> is nobody's ever had anything bad to say about this movie that didn't just steal their opinion from someone else. I, I definitely have a negative opinion, but it's more on what, not, not necessarily the movie that was made, it's what came later on in the 90s when we started to... Uh, when we, when uh, Lucas decided to go back and start tinkering and playing around, it, it kind of that kind of miffed me. But all in all, I don't have the, the the original shot of it all. I have no negative opinion on. Are you talking about like the the, the re-releases yeah, the with the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the, that all started up when like I was in the the prime of my life in the '90s, and I remember uh, actually up until you guys reached out to do this review, I had never seen the actual remaster uh, with all the extra little bits and pieces until a couple of days ago. Uh, I had seen the remaster for Empire, seen the remaster for uh, Return of the Jedi, but never um, never New Hope. It's just so I hard don't... to get the original cut anymore. Is the problem uh, due to my age and elderly status? I don't. I had a bunch of VHS tapes kicking. Yeah, around. I mean, I've got VHS tapes of it, but I don't think we have DVDs anymore aware of the I don't, original trilogy well and you i don't have a vhs player like, that would be my problem <laughs> <laughs> i don't think anybody does anymore right like that would be a whole other thing to track i mean i'm sure i could go on amazon right now and just google it or search it and buy one um but i do have i mean there are endless positive reviews of the of this movie um you know just picking one little tidbit out of here the the top critic reviews on rotten tomatoes joseph gelmas from newsday back in 2017 says i haven't had as much fun at a movie in years with its technical wizardry high velocity storytelling and spirited good humor star wars dazzles the child in us uh which is you know i mean i don't think that any of these writers are gonna say anything that uh that hasn't already been said a million times and that we're gonna say over and over again so that's uh that's basically what the positive reviews are looking like but all in all this is you know the kickoff to the greatest film franchise of all time you could say what you want about the prequels you can say what you want about the sequels it's still the biggest and baddest films franchise ever it's still freaking star wars it, it is still very much the juggernaut that it was back in the 80s and the 90s and, and still continues today like and this movie's so good i loved it it is good so carrie tell us a little bit about your background with star wars uh, so, uh, The New Hope was like the first uh, foray into all things like science fiction for me. Uh, I remember I was, uh, shoot, I had to be four or five, and my grandfather sat me down. He's like, we're going to watch a movie. You're going to like it. I'm like, oh, sure. <laughs> yes, okay. sir. Yeah, man, why not, right? Like, <laughs> you know, who, who am I to argue with you? <laughs> And uh, ju just from the get-go, like, just that, that blasting fanfare right before the scrolling text, all that sort of, like, I was at the edge of my seat from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was hooked from the get-go. And uh, I have i don't know how many times I've seen the original trilogy, uh, either as a kid or a teenager, even as an adult. Uh, when my son learns to sit down for more than five seconds, I'm going to strap him down and make sure he watches all of them. Right. <laughs> But like it, it really was the first. I guess as a kid, like one of the first real obsessions, right? Like you got you got the franchises that you just glue yourself to. Star Wars had to be the first one for me. Oh yeah, I think uh, I think it's the same for me. Like I remember, I, I don't remember a time in my life where Star Wars wasn't like something you were interested in. Like I was before I understood what was going on in the movies. I remember I was collecting the toys and like just going all in on being interested in it and then oh yeah absolutely i i had toys for star wars before i'd ever even seen the movies because it's so good <laughs> the toy carry can i ask you how old you are or is that like is that oh no i at, at a certain time in my life i stopped giving up about worrying about that stuff i'm i'm 36 gotcha so i, I was born in 81 so like right right at the peak of the fervor of the original trilogy right Jealous. it was a tacky time <laughs> you, you didn't miss you didn't miss a whole lot <laughs> You know, we did just review I, Ready Player One last night, the the love story to the eighties. So yeah, yeah, we we uh, we here at Nerdium have a tragic story about trying to get to the theater to see that and then not having to see it and then getting stuck watching Pacific Rim two instead. Was that any good? Oh gosh, uh, you know, it's a man, it's it's a movie about monsters beating up giant robots. That it is what it is, man. Like I mean, if if you, it's it's a movie where if you look at the movie poster, you know the plot from beginning to end. Is but it like, it, it's 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 a fun popcorn movie. I feel like all the previews I've seen, it's exactly like every episode of Power Rangers, where it's like we've got the robots and we're fighting the giant monsters. And we beat the giant monsters, but then the giant monsters come back even bigger, and now we yeah. gotta find a way to fight the bigger one. That that's not an unfair assessment <laughs> as to some of the the major plot points of the movie. <laughs> But it, it's it's a good uh, it's a good sequel to to a fun movie. Like if you like movies like Godzilla and like the big rock'em sock'em sort of, I'm just going to turn my brain off. I'm not going to worry about the the script writing in this. I'm not going to worry about anything. But just I just want a, a a visual and audio feast for a little while. That's that's what you're going to get for that movie. 
Well, that's good. I feel like there are ways to do that wrong, though. Like, like, yeah, we can just turn our brains off, but, like, the first Transformers movie is totally watchable. The last <laughs> Transformers movie, terrible. Yeah, that's 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 not unfair. Like, I... It, okay, that, with that being said, I had more fun during the first one, but that's because the first one was brand new and I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. In, in the second go-around, you know what the Jaegers are, you know what the Kaiju are, you kind of you kind of understand the, the world that they live in, so it's not as new. You don't have that, that sheen you know that you can get off of off of watching a new franchise start but right. it's it's not a bad movie man like it's, it's it's a good big screen movie if you have the money to throw away the ticket well and i think it's it's a it's properly ambitious because it's not often we get new franchises with almost no source material like ever yeah, anymore exactly you, you don't see a lot of new movies no um uh, you know even like because the first Ready one player one is a book the first one know? came out like, like what five years ago Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. We were in college. It was. Saw it, it wasn't bad. Yeah. It it it's a like it's a good fun movie. Like it's it's nice. It's different. The sequel is it it's good on a big screen. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Um, but you know if I if given the choice between paying full price to see that or waiting for it to come on Netflix, I uh, you'd probably be happier waiting for it to come on Netflix. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Seems like a fair assessment. So what do you think of Star Wars the, this this time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so, so excited to talk about this movie. Sorry. So th- this time around, I I loved it just as much as I loved it when I was a kid, man. It, it, it ages so well. It does. You, Shockingly well, yeah. All things considered, you just automatically forgive a lot of things. Just but the, like the, you're, you're like, oh man, Star Wars. Like the, the the crawl happens, and it's like a good crawl this time instead of like you know talking about <laughs> Naboo. turmoil in the Galactic Senate. <laughs> And you just hear that, bah, no, I, bah, 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 and you're like, oh my god, it's happening. <laughs> it was, uh, like, when I was making my notes, I just kind of had it, like, a ah, it's like slipping into, like, that nice pair of slippers you have at home. They're just there waiting for you. They're just the right fit. They're the right comfort. Just, you just feel at home when that, when all that starts up. Oh, yeah. It just, it felt like, because we just, we just reviewed all the prequels and Rogue One. And so it felt like coming home like, after a is- long journey. Yeah, it's like, this is I where I did. belong. I, I told Tyler this is how we're gonna feel because he's a prequel apologist. He loves the prequels more than he'll w- he's willing to admit. And I'm just like, just wait till we get to like a good movie again. <laughs> We did. I mean, Ready Player One was a good movie, so that was, and so was. I mean, we also just did uh, Monty Python, which was a great movie. Yeah, Monty uh, Python's all, always good to go through. Yeah, that was a good break. Um, but yeah, I, I also am a, a bit of a prequels apologist, but I, I think I know it's a guilty pleasure. Like, I think I'm watching it and I'm like, I love this, but I understand that everybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the reasons I love this are the reasons everyone else hates it, right? <laughs> like, I can find things in the prequels that I enjoy, and I can watch the prequels and not be as violently ill as most people are about it but they're they're still trash compared to the original trilogy oh absolutely but i mean again it's like it is still star wars like there are lightsabers and jedi darth vader's in one of them you know that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> oh look there there's there's goes darth vader awesome yay darth vader yay darth vader <laughs> <laughs> Fan service. <laughs> Blue milk. Yeah, man, I that was that was an uncomfortable scene for me. I don't I don't know why. It just felt really uncomfortable when he did that. <laughs> he was just so angry about it. <laughs> yeah, like I, I work out in the country where there's a lot of farms. If I ever had a farmer milk a cow and then just like dead glare me while he drank the unpasteurized milk, <laughs> I, I I would just walk away. <laughs> Like, excuse me, sir. No more job. Just, just walk away. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm just going to see myself out. There's, there's no need for me to be here. I'm out here. <laughs> That's the best oh. way I've heard that, that whole scene described so far. Because <laughs> a lot of people have been able to sort of express their discomfort. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, <laughs> I'm going to bring it up ahead of time. Um, immediately in this movie we get the issue of the stormtroopers in that the stormtroopers walk out of the ship and just murder everyone and they're like so good at shooting things for yeah for like the first 30 seconds they're good at shooting why can't they hit anybody after that (laughs) because ethan everybody knows this vader told them not to hit anybody vader wants him to win he's using his force powers because he's the chosen one luke's his son that's the whole thing but at that point in time at the beginning of the movie luke is is nowhere on the ship and he knows luke is not on the ship he's 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 clearly not there for luke though (laughs) Oh, yeah, okay. But by, by the way he lectured her like an angry manager at McDonald's to the fry cook, <laughs> I'm not sure he was too concerned about it. I mean, I he uses the probe and he like sort of protects her. He's like, wait, wait, don't kill her. We could find another use for her. Anything else? 
That sounds like an inappropriate comment for a father to be, be making at his daughter. I, I mean, you could be, you could see it that way. I, I did see it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking maybe like we could use her for as a ransom or something, but I guess the creepy dad thing, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> but he doesn't know that's her his daughter. Doesn't? I don't think so. I, he but, doesn't know he had twins, does yeah. he? Yeah. Doesn't he um, really just kind of bring that up to Luke, though, in uh, Return of the Jedi when, when Luke is refusing to turn over to the dark side? Like, isn't that what sets Luke off in, like, one of the final battles? It's it's very possible that that is. My Return of the Jedi knowledge is probably my weakest Star Wars knowledge. I'll be 100% honest. I, oh, I'm just trying to remember when he, when, when Luke won't turn back and may, maybe... He, he mentioned something like maybe your sister or some, something like that, but uh, during this movie uh luke and leia if if you're an old man like me clearly don't know their brother and sister yet uh until no, george geez. lucas came along and, and cleaned up that little scene yeah. yeah he was like well they were kissing and they at least her a little uh, little peck on the cheek in this movie and i was like ooh, so, so cute. well it's a little peck on the cheek in this edition of the movie in my edition of the movie it's a full-on like what's up i'm gonna call oh. you when this is all over <laughs> yeah i have seen the original well, that scene happens in uh that happens in, uh, what's it called as well, where they give a real kiss. I will say Empire is the, it's just a, uh, it's terrible what they did with the, with the special effects after the fact. Yeah. It's, it's brutal. Yeah. I, uh, I, I had a hard time with it, but uh, again, the, the whole idea of Lucas going back and then like, oh, well, the technology wasn't there when, when I originally made it, but now I want to go back and just make this, this beautiful thing. It's like, man. Could you imagine if every director that's ever made, like, a huge movie decided, hey, the technology wasn't there, so now I'm just going to go back and just redo everything? I mean, Titanic would have been nuts. Well, I'm just, you know? I'm just imagining... <laughs> I'm imagining Peter Jackson going back to Lord of the Rings and being like, mm, nope, that was good. Yep. Yeah. I did not f*** <laughs> that one up. Right? I'm pretty yeah. pleased with how that one came out. <laughs> I f***ed up the later Peter, ones. are you going to redo the movies? No. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so this is the first time I've, like, watched this movie critically to try to, like, you know, obviously I tried to pick out flaws in it and stuff, so I found a few that I can overlook, but this movie's pretty bad on the canon, uh, which proves to me that... George Lucas as is a liar in that he's like, I had the whole thing planned out. No, you didn't. No, I, no. I, I remember reading him on that statement and just like calling BS like right then and there. You wouldn't you well, wouldn't I'm have like, had Luke and Leia making out. Uh Right. Obi Wan would have never said the line about it. I can't recall ever having a droid. Right. He wouldn't look at R two D two and be like, What's that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I've a never droid. seen an we'll astromech before. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I think he did like, plan out the hello there thing, though. That must have been on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I but, bur- busted out laughing when Obi-Wan Kenobi's first line in this movie was, hello there. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, he's a gentleman. You say hello first. <laughs> Talking to a droid. It's just it's been so overplayed with the with the prequel scene with General <laughs> Grievous. And it, it just it completely taken out of context in that like it's a thing that he says to droids, apparently. It's canon. Right. The, the, the thing the funny thing about it all being canon and all that jazz is aside from the prequels that suddenly gave uh R two D two rocket boosters up his and everything in between. Like you you would think that by from Anakin being uh, uh, a little kid on Tatooine building his own protocol droid. And then in the opening sequence of A New Hope, you see C-3PO and R2-D2 running around, and then there's another protocol droid coming in behind them, and there's no improvement on technology. It is the exact same. And we're looking at like 30 years difference between the two events, roughly, 30, 40 years. Well, I think that's the. I think that's actually intentional. This is where I sort of see some of the genius of Star Wars, and I've talked about this before because the protocol droid that Anakin builds is the same as the one that is on the ship at the beginning of the Phantom Menace. Yeah, it's like built from a yeah. kit, like right. Um, and the fact that the technology hasn't advanced, I think, shows the oppression of the Empire more than anything else. Because, like, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, there's some sweet technology going on in that universe. Like, the Senate's got these big floaty chairs and everything, and there's all this cool data, and there's battle droids and all this stuff. And then by the time we get to A New Hope, it's like, they are using, like, touch-it light boards. Like, what are those things called from the 90s? You light- put the pegs in and they light, light up. Brights? Light brights. Oh, the light brights? Yeah, they're using light brights to plan out attacks. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's part of the reason. Because if the Empire isn't oppressive in any way, then they're not really villains. And the Rebellion is just a rebellion. So, you know? So, uh, Phantom Menace takes place, what, 28 years 
before Battle of Yavin, something like that. Thirty years. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. Yeah, so BBY is a, a very strange concept to me. <laughs> I was led to believe that that was like the height of technology in the in the in the day. I believe it, man. That Nubian starfighter was sweet. It was all chrome. Yeah. Mm. So what I'm saying is like the war broke out then, and it progressively got worse. There was the trade blockades that can't have helped. You know, everything like that. I don't know. It makes sense to me. I've, I'm I'm cool with it. It was a good way to kind of play everything backwards because obviously they didn't have the technology in 1977. They did in 1999 to make all that stuff. Yeah, but yeah. okay, Ethan. I hear you there, but in 2017, we got a pretty good look at what it could have looked like in 1999 if you just didn't do the old, like, the upgraded technology. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but that's because... Like, Rogue One and, and them look like the original trilogy. Agreed. Yeah. They're compensating for the mistakes that George Lucas made in the late 90s. <laughs> So, so many mistakes. And like every, this whole, this whole franchise has just been cleaning up after George Lucas's mistakes. That's because George Lucas had the world's best idea and was not the best person for it. Right. But, but that, and, and then on the other hand too, you also have like all of us, especially if your your first foray into Star Wars is like the, the original trilogy. Uh, it, it's like you, you cling on to that, that emotion and that feeling you had the first time you went through the trilogy. Like this was it. This was your life. This is where it was going to be for you. Uh, Anybody to do anything after is uh, you're, you're going to look at it with a different set of eyes, and you're going to want to you're going to go hunting for that emotion that you first found it, and it, it's probably not going to be there because you're not a little kid watching a lightsaber battle for the first time. Oh, you know, I, like like yeah. there 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 is always that you know you're not going to have that same hard hitting emotion you got the first time you saw Star Wars that that made us all latch onto the franchise. I, I completely agree. Well, I mean, I I go ahead. Ethan. George Lucas collectively wrote. Like, there was sci-fi before Star Wars, but George Lucas wrote all of that out of history. Like, no, nobody thinks about the, the, the pre-Star Wars time as being a time where there was science fiction. I don't think about the 60s at all. But, like... I can't say I was around for any of it, so I didn't I really don't worry about it too much. That's, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. It's I, like, this is... I will say this. As far as integration with films since the original trilogy, and I didn't think I was going to say this, but because we just did it... Like, I accidentally figured this out for myself. I think if you're going to introduce someone to Star Wars who's never been a part of it before, and you're going to say, listen, there are nine of these movies, okay? You have to, if you start, and, and two of the newer ones are very, very good, right? You need to see what the fast-paced version of this looks like and what the original trilogy of the version of this looks like. So what we're going to do, and I I can't believe I'm saying this, I think you should start with Rogue One. Because the Rogue One A New Hope story is so connected. Like, they talk about, like, everything with Leia is about the droids, is about the, you know, everything is about those Death Star plans from the data packs. And if you watch Rogue One straight into A New Hope, it really, I think it really connects well. And, it's, and it gives a viewer who's not as familiar with Star Wars, like a trial movie that's good enough that, you know, I think can hook somebody into the series and then gives them a new hope which is just amazing and it doesn't spoil the reveals in Empire and it doesn't you know it, it, it's not a bad thing it's like a replacement for the prequels you can start with Rogue One into a new hope and then you go from there five six one two three seven eight no, that wouldn't be a bad idea like that that would be a pretty good way of, of slowly getting somebody in there without them uh, being being too lost in the weeds well yeah and I think the other thing that's great about I don't know how I got stuck on Rogue One but I think one of the good things about Rogue One is that all the characters do die so so, you know, if you introduce somebody to Star Wars and you're like, like, you almost get a second chance if they're like, I didn't like that movie. It's like, well, no problem, because they're all dead. Let's try again with, with the new Don't worry. <laughs> they're wiped. They're not coming back. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to worry about any of them. Their character arcs were stupid. I agree. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> But if they did like it, you're like, I know, isn't Star Wars the best? <laughs> so yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good way to hit the ground running. Yeah, that that's my two cents. Because cause you don't, like, if, if you're not familiar mm. with late 70s and 80s cinema, like, if you're not a person who watches that and naturally enjoys it or naturally gets sucked into it, I think you have a hard time watching Star Wars. Would, I, do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, I, I, I don't disagree. know, because I think Star Wars kind of stands alone on its own. Like, like 80s cinema uh, could be a real dumpster fire, but... Uh, Star Wars was like its own. I, I I really don't have too many words to put. It. I mean, it was just its own thing. Like it doesn't. You can't grab a bunch of movies from the '80s and then put them beside Star Wars and be like, "These are great movies." You know, this is what the '80s represents. Star Wars uh, to me always seemed like it represented its own thing. I can I can jive with that. I wasn't there for the '80s, so I don't. I was not there. Well, that's what I was getting to earlier. Like this is year zero essentially for for sci-fi. It's like everything that was before this happened before Star Wars. Everything after has happened after Star Wars and has thus been. Compared to Star Wars. So from like my standpoint, 
the science fiction that I was shown prior to Star Wars, um, like my, my, my granddad was a huge movie buff. So, uh, it was a lot of movies from like the forties and the fifties and the sixties and the seventies. So the science fiction for me was like the weird B movies, you know, giant radioactive monsters or the fantastic voyage or, uh, mission to the moon, like all these really weird science, but it was like weird campy science fiction. It wasn't like, Oh yeah. Uh, it wasn't like serious drama. There's, there, there's some stuff about to hit the fan. It was just like, ah, we're going to build a ladder to the moon because it's the 50s and why the hell not? Uh, so it, it, it really, you're, you're not wrong to say science fiction before Star Wars wasn't much. Now, what is your take on science fiction immediately following Star Wars? Like, what it, how, what are your views on Back to the Future? Uh, I, I love Back to the Future. That's right. Welcome to but Welcome I... to Bacon and Eggs. Welcome to Bacon and Eggs. <laughs> But like, uh, sci- like science fiction as a genre to me, there's there's all kinds of stuff that I can pick and choose from science fiction that I love. Um, mm. I never got into Battlestar Galactica. I never got into Firefly, which apparently is is just tantamount to to saying the Lord's name in vain. Apparently, to some people. Well, uh, we I, we also have not gotten into. It. I watched I watched Firefly. I thought it was a dumpster fire. I did couldn't yeah, I really? couldn't care less about Firefly, and it's right. But, so you're you're in good company here. I don't think Ty's seen it. You're right. So but no, but no. like but then like uh, some. Something like Star Trek is there, and I loved Star Trek. You know what I mean? But it's mm-hmm. it, it's two different brands of space science fiction action adventure sort of thing. But they they, they stand alone on you know they, they can stand by themselves. Right, right, and and. And that's the thing is like Star Trek has had to come up against or under fire like from Star Wars, even though Star Wars came out what eleven years later. Star Trek was sixty five, sixty six, something along something those like, lines, yeah, and, and, and had, really only for a couple of seasons, right? But you had you know two thousand one uh, come out, came out in sixty eight, movies like that. Uh, War of the Worlds was like nineteen fifty. So, like, it yeah, was there. That's, this dramatic science fiction it, was there, and it's just been forgotten. It, 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 it's all pretty, like, it's all solid science fiction. You just have to, uh, I, I know a lot of people that I, that'll i come over and be like, oh, I want to watch, you know, some weird movie, and I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll put on some really crazy science fiction from, like, back in the day. Uh, they have a hard time watching it, because, one, the special effects are just... Horrendous. <laughs> they're... they're they're either super horrendous or they're really super, super practical. And, you know, they're not as pretty, right? <laughs> it's, it can be hard to watch if you don't have that wherewithal to be like, hey, I really want to experience what science fiction looked like. If you want to experience what science fiction looked like, looked like back then, go watch, like, the 1951, The Day the Earth Stood Still. It's awful. It's a great movie, but the su- the special effects are so terrible. Yeah, I mean, there's, just, just, there's so many movies with terrible special effects. N- this movie has terrible special no, effects. No, this this movie has great special effects compared to everything before it. I think before I really got into movies and started understanding special effects, the special effects for this at the time, and, and this is like the early eighties, was was mind boggling for me. You know, I, I couldn't I couldn't believe what I was seeing and, and then when I when I got older I of course found out how they did it, but then it was like, man, uh just insane. Well, the special effects well, in this movie were as good, if not better, than Back to the Future, which came out eight years later. There was not one DeLorean in this movie. How could they be better? <laughs> There was a Death Star. <laughs> it was a Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Oh. Tra- trade a new DeLorean for Millennium Falcon. Call it a day. I mean, right. I, it's, it's a Farsi trade. Right. <laughs> Um, but this is something that I was actually thinking about when I was watching it, and I don't, I, I was very young when I saw the original releases, so I, I could be mistaken on this, but when he's in the targeting computer, and it's got the little, like, vector graphic, sort of, in the Millennium Falcon while they're taking on the TIE Fighters, and you can sort of, like, vector graphic your way around, that's incredibly, like, advanced when you consider that, like, the Atari 2600 was released in 1977, the same year, and, like, didn't even sell, and, like, games from the Atari 2600 were impossibly, like, lame, bad awful you know there was no graphic whatsoever um and like just the way that they were able to do that and it looked so seamless and it looked so natural i thought that was uh really really interesting that's just something i'd like to point out yeah no that's that that's a good point like i remember i remember playing a a 2600 and you're right the the graphics from from the targeting computer are way better than what you would ever find and even in in half the arcade games that would be kicking around uh, at at that time as well Mm -hmm. for sure it looks like tempest I want to get me an Atari 2600. I just, uh, I, I'm now because you said it, I'm doing research on the Atari 2600. <laughs> Apparently, it came out when it was released. It was two hundred dollars in 1977. Which is apparently equivalent to eight hundred dollars in today's money. Well, currently Ooh. you can get an Atari twenty six hundred for on eBay. 
it looks like, for uh, refurbished for $129. I have an Atari that your wife bought me. I know. I'm so jealous. I got a Sega Genesis. I already owned one of those. Did you just say you have an Atari his wife bought you? <laughs> I mean, it's that like That sounds a, oddly combative. It's, it's like, the, it's like the, the like classic, you know, they've been doing like the NES Classic and whatever. It's the Atari version of that. Um, so it does. It just had a bunch of games built into it. Isn't, isn't that the one that they were selling like at like... Um, you know, like JCPenney. Here? Yeah, 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 like, this is just the weird, like, big box stores where it's just, like, buy some pillows over there and uh, an Atari 2600 over there. Yeah. Yeah, well, I love that's it. exactly what so it's like. So it's, it's great. I played Space Invaders the other day. I was playing Space Invaders the other day. I Very rarely on classic video games do I revisit them as an adult and I'm just naturally better at them. It turns out they just really were very hard and... Seven-year-old me wasn't just. Oh, I was. Bad I was watching Ray Player One. You know, I was watching Wade play Adventure like it was nothing, and I play Adventure and I get wrecked in thirty seconds. Yeah, Adventure. They're like, hard. yeah, just go left oh. and find the secret screen. I'm like, secret screen. There's enemies. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta kill stuff. Uh, the the whole finding the the Easter egg and adventure takes about thirteen minutes, so they kind of that. So up. watching this movie reminded me of nothing more than how much I don't like C three PO. And I'm sorry if was that it, offends anybody. Was it you in in the in uh, I guess you guys were talking about episode three that said Anthony Daniels or whoever the hell plays C3PO was it? Yes, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. that, that, that is that is a backed up fact. Like this is a real thing. Nobody likes Anthony, Anthony Daniels. Like everybody hated working with him. I think he was probably the only member of the cast that didn't f- Carrie Fisher. Naughty. Oh, now, now. Uh, this don't, don't talk about sweet young I mean, Carrie Fisher. That's by her own admission, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that's uh, she, that. That as was as long as she's on the. That level. was her only piece of advice for uh, what Daisy Ridley was: don't sleep with the entire cast. No, I, th- I thought it was don't sleep with Anthony Daniels. <laughs> 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 I mean, like, like uh, he's just. And you can tell in this, but he's just insufferable. All he does is complain. He's so mean to R2-D2. Stop that. Here's my thing. Here's Listen, we have more Star Wars now than we did five years ago. C-3PO and R2-D2 are stupid characters, and BB-8 is the best. And I don't care about C-3PO and R2-D2 anymore because I know eventually I don't have to care about them because BB-8 will be back, and that's all that matters. And BB-8 is amazing, and I just don't care. And that's basically, like, like, if they, like now that we have more series... It's allowed to shape my view on the whole series, if that makes sense. Well, and I me, just for, go ahead. For for me, for the droids, they they were they were a running joke that just never went away. There was no punchline. You know, like like they, they played like a they, they were supposed to be like the 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 uh, Laurel and Hardy esque Abbott and Costello. They they can't get along. They can't get on without each other. Ha ha ha! Look at these two go on. Uh, that and you would have no thought. Joke. Well, you, you just would have thought that they would have just called it a day by Empire. You know, it, it was just a the, the two of them just got in in my opinion got played out and when i saw them in it start up in the phantom menace with them it was just like man what are you why are you here yeah well them and anakin i think are like the only characters to well now them only are the only characters to appear in all nine movies right were they Anakin's were they in rogue in one seven they eight. weren't in rogue one i think they're like in the background or something i don't know <laughs> but like i i am generally a fan well, R2's in Road 1. He's he's the one that gets the plans. Oh, yeah. Right? No. No, I guess no, Leia, Leia gets, gets the plans. plans. She gives him the R2 in the first scene of this movie. Anyway, yeah. I am generally a fan of the comedy that occurs when, like, one character speaks English and the other character doesn't, and only that person can understand the other character. I like that. But there's a better example of that in this movie. <laughs> With Chewbacca? With Chewbacca and Han. Yeah. I guess that's true. There's two of those little, like, bilingual buddies. Right. It's like, But I like that, the one where you have to, like, reveal what that person said by their reaction. Like, in Ocean's Eleven, when, when uh, you know, Yen speaks in Chinese and everybody can understand him, and they just talk to him like he's <laughs> in English. Like, I love that. It, it cracks me up. But, like, with C3, C-3PO and R2-D2, it doesn't. Because all C-3PO does is the whole time. The entire time. The entire yeah. movie. All he does is complain. Yeah. That's, that, that's not unfair. I've, uh... He pretty well I, I mean, sells himself to Owen. He's a droid. Like, why does he care? I have no idea. Maybe he's really excited about moisture why, farming. No, but why is he upset? Like, why is it? Why do things bother him? Well, that's we've discussed this a few times. Is that the droids in Star Wars? They just get to have feelings, like K- and that's K2SO just going to have to be care. something you're okay with. <laughs> K two S O would not have Here, sat droid, there and been like, feelings. "I hate sand." <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess, like father, like son, since C three PO clearly f-ing hates sand. Well, wouldn't you if you were a robot, or getting all up in your gears? Definitely, and, and he gets like ninety percent submerged in oil. Yeah, that was a that... weird thing. Do you think Anthony Daniels had to do that? I guess. Or did probably they just in his put... writer. I'll be in your movie, but I want to get submerged in oil, and it better be hot this time. <laughs> <laughs> You make me wear that suit, I better get something out of it. (laughs) 
like legitimately the only funny thing C-3PO has ever done in nine movies is say the line about the red arm. He probably didn't recognize me because of the red arm. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I hate probably... C-3PO. So I have a question and, and maybe y'all can answer this for me. Why are stormtroopers so dumb? They, at the, the first, the first scene when Darth Vader's like, I want this whole ship searched for the plans and they start looking like behind sh like they're just gonna be sitting there behind a pipe <laughs> with a big hey if vader says check the whole area you check the whole area man home the desert like a big <laughs> sign that says we ain't found comb the, <laughs> comb the desert you think we're being too literal they're like the, the, well, there's not gonna be a big sign that says death star plans <laughs> <laughs> Here well, they are. But there, there's a lot of stuff like that. Like, even when the escape pod breaks out uh, from the initial onslaught there and they scan it, they're like, oh, yeah, there's no life form, so ah, just let it go. It's you the know, dumbest like, thing I've ever heard. Anyway. Like, Fa Family Guy did the good did a good bit when it was like, well, what are you, are you paying for the laser beams? Like, what is... <laughs> okay, let's not shoot that one. But in a world where you know that droids are up and moving around and and just doing their own thing, like you have to assume that just because you don't see any humanoid life forms on there doesn't mean there's not a bunch of droids with valuable shit going right. on the down there. Like, well, and only like six hours ago, K two S O was just shooting all of your men down right? on like on whatever planet that was. Like, clearly, droids can rebel. And fight back. <laughs> they they can become an issue. Well, so just K2SO right. why, units just, are out destroy everything. K two S O units disappeared in like the three hours between the end of Rogue One and the beginning <laughs> yeah. of this movie. So <laughs> what whatever happened there? Oh. Should have had a better writer, man. I just should have had the Anthony Perkins writer. This movie, <laughs> this movie's so great. Also, Anthony Hopkins, not per Anthony Daniels. Daniel. Oh, Anthony I Perkins is Norman yeah. Bates. Yeah, yeah, I, was gonna... <laughs> I tried to say Anthony Hopkins. That's Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I'm stuck on serial killers. Sam Lecter. I'm in a great addition. Anthony to this Daniels. Film. <laughs> Andy Perkins is Norman Bates. Although he probably would have made a better C3PO. He probably wouldn't have bitch as much. Probably wouldn't have bit calmer about it anyway. I just got so excited when this movie started and and like Bail Organa's ship like zoom over the over the horizon. It just it, it felt it, like an old friend. This movie it is, is an old friend. It, 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 exactly, right? Like it, it's 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 coming home to a nice warm bath, man. It's it's especially since you guys have just trudged your way through the prequels. Ah, oh, just everything felt right again. The score in this movie is amazing, by the way. Just I, I get that it's the same theme and same themes in every movie, but like this one is exceptional. Like that piece of music when Luke is looking at the two sons over Tatooine, it's just like that that piece of music that's been in all the rest of them since then. But it's just the first time you hear it. It's Ooh. so tough for me to be like to think of this as the first time. Like I cannot imagine. Imagine being an audience going in and seeing this movie for the first time and like not knowing there was going to be this whole world that sprawls out of it. Yeah, it's it, it's true. Like I, I remember how I felt the first time I saw it, but I, I can't remember any point in time in my life that I've never had Star Wars in it. Well, right. when, none of us I, were alive at a time when Star Wars didn't exist. Right. Yeah, when exactly. there was no Empire Strikes Back, you know. Thank God the sequels were good, like the original sequels. <laughs> I mean, I guess it didn't matter back in the 80s, though, because like Back to the Future Part 2 is garbage. Back to the Future's still great. Part 3's not bad. Well, yeah, the series as a whole isn't too bad. I mean, it's, it's a good, like, you know, it's another good, solid franchise. If Pirates of the Caribbean's anything to be said, you can't judge a movie on the sequels. Yeah, because Black Pearl's <laughs> amazing, and the next four are totally different. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> Two is bad. I think four is bad, and I've heard five is bad. Three was good. Three, Three was, was awesome. Three was, yeah, but that. that was an outlier. It's, it's long though, isn't it? It's like over two and a half I hours or know. something. Probably. Why do Tie Fighters scream? What? Who? De <laughs> who decided on that noise? Ethan, it's the physics of outer space. That's how sound it's, works out there. It's all that air and space rushing by their wings. <laughs> right. like, I'm just. I thought that was pretty clear from the get go. I just imagine the sun from Rick and Morty. <laughs> 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 like everything's on the cob. <laughs> like you just you start the tie fighter and just goes ah! I have no idea what the Top Fighter scream, but I think it's a cool noise. Like it's so I just I I would love to go back in the conversation when they like figured that one out. What somebody we... somebody heard that and went, there it is. That's it. Like that's that's the sound right there. Noise. And somebody's just like, that's the one. <laughs> that's it. Just... Somebody was dragging their kid out by their hair like, that, that, get a microphone over there. <laughs> Where's the boom? <laughs> I'd love to know what made that noise. Dear past Ethan, this is future Ethan here to let you know that you did some research on this very topic and found out the sound of TIE Fighters are made by a combination of baby elephant trunk noises and a car driving very fast by a microphone in wet pavement. 
Carrie, you said who has not yet seen Star Wars. That's true. You said a son. Yep. Does he have a Star Wars name? You don't have to tell us your son's name. That's obviously like whatever. Does, but... He just just kind of has a regular name, man. Like I really wasn't going for <laughs> crazy Star Wars themed name. And and that being said, my girlfriend would just shoot me if I even <laughs> suggested the. I suggested Bruce because of Batman, and and that was met with a glare that said, "You go in the other room and you sit and you think about what you just said." <laughs> So, I think that is the same conversation my son. mother had with my father when he decided he wanted to name me Winston. Mm. After, like, mm. Fair show. conversation. Yeah. <laughs> my wife is okay with the name Oliver, but we do not have a son, so after Oliver Queen. Mm. Okay. No, he's he's just not he's he's a uh, he's eighteen months old right now, so he's he's far more interested in finding stuff on the table to throw onto the ground than he is to actually sit down and watch TV. Right. Has he started putting so, everything in his mouth yet? Oh, yeah, we've been going on with okay. that for a while. That's why there's very little things that he can't choke on, just, you know, stashed everywhere. Right. <laughs> One of these days, I'm just going to lay marbles out all over the floor and be like, all right, buddy, um, we're just going to let nature take its course yeah. here, so I hope you're uh, Sink or swim, smart bud. enough to know better. <laughs> yeah. Right. Survival of the fittest, man. Let's see what you got. <laughs> yeah, man, no, it's, you know, sorry if you don't make it out. Maybe the next one will get a little bit further than you did. <laughs> Trial number one, off you go. <laughs> You know, I don't know that that's the best parenting advice. Yeah, but think about the ones that make it, though. Oh, oh they'll yeah, be we'll fit. Have a whole... <laughs> <laughs> they'll be the fittest. <laughs> Good. Oh, you got to stop making me laugh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So, this is such a good movie. So, Obi-Wan Kenobi calls Darth Vader Darth. Like it's his name. Like a first name. Yeah, you know, sup Darth. Yeah. What's howdy. good? It's, it, if there's anybody that should know how the whole Sith thing works, out of all of the characters in the movie, it's it's Obi-Wan. I mean, here's the, here's the dilly, though. Obi-Wan can do whatever he wants. And this is another George Lucas thing, right? George Lucas, you're going to keep watching these movies, and you're going to be like, he didn't even figure out how he wants people to say, uh... Harrison Ford's character's name. Or Leia's. Or Leia's. There's like Leah and yeah. Leia, and then Lando says Han, and other people say Han. Mm-hmm. Chewbacca's vernacular is just the same grunt over and over again. There's no way anybody knows what <laughs> nobody no way anybody knows what he's saying. Like I had forgotten about the scene where Alec Guinness as Obi-Wan Kenobi just runs out in the hood screaming and waving his arms. <laughs> <laughs> I had completely blocked that out of my memory somehow. That's his first line. It's not hello there. It's, uh, what if that was how he approached General Grievous? <laughs> oh, that would have gotten the job done. He just right. drops down from the sky and goes... <laughs> yeah, but that's like a common tactic through the movie. Like when they're on the Death Star and, and they're running away from the stormtroopers, like Han Solo turns around and he's like chasing like a half a dozen troopers. <laughs> Like, roaring like a monster, <laughs> not firing anything, like, not taking him out, just like, boogity, 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 all the way down the hall. He, he looks at Luke and he's like, I got this, don't worry, and just runs after him and they just run away. <laughs> I got I this, ah. Why do they run away? That's what I want to know. Because they're under direct orders not to kill the heroes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or they've That's... come to the stark realization that anything they fire at just fires back and they can't hit anything to save their lives yeah oh crap we're terrible soldiers these blast points are too accurate for sand people they must be made by imperial stormtroopers i was like (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean those sand people shot a pod race yeah like while it was moving (laughs) they were also very much ready to just assassinate luke well i mean i i I get that they're territorial you know what are you doing on my chunk of sand they they could have just sniped him right out of the speeder movie over done (laughs) chunk of sand darth vader wins game over darth vader kind of wins in the end the emperor dies the whole sith prophecy well he he gets to be a nice blue ghost up with uh with obi-wan and yoda don't start that don't don't even don't even let's not even we, we we've already discussed my opinions on hayden christensen there's there's no there's no need to turn this into a very r-rated podcast <laughs> oh man he's have you seen looper it's so bad no uh, no 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 okay i uh i I've, I've never been so disappointed in my life yeah same same pretty much you've never been so disappointed in your entire life no no i've disappointed many people like that in my life but i've never been so disappointed interesting as, as have, with the prequels correct or uh, yeah as Hayden with the prequels no it's because you have to like the opening like like we talk about how great this movie is this is the darth vader was the first villain i was like i i like the villain i'm cheering on the villain like yeah man for, force choke that guy go for it uh to take this 
this huge hulking badass and turn him into just a moody kid that's not getting his way and moping and just oh my life my life is so hard i can't do this i can't do that it just i can't i couldn't handle it man i was so i was looking for like uh like at the beginning of new hope where where luke's kind of having it out with his uncle and he's just he's getting really pissed that he can't go to the academy and he's 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 kind of like he's getting angry about it i never got angry from from hayden christensen i got mopey depressed because i can't have my way so the academy is the the rebellion flight academy is that what's like i was never sure about that like i thought he was the first time is there like an independent remember, like, flight like, academy that trains everyone and then they go kill themselves kill amongst themselves I, I thought it was for the empire i thought it was the empire flight academy Ah. I mean, yeah, that's that's what you would believe, like, because they are the rebels gonna have a flight academy. The rebels can't have a flight academy. The empire would know where it is. It wouldn't be that hard to find out if a moisture farmer from Tatooine can just go there. Yeah, and and that that's it. Like, I I was when I've watched these movies, like at an older age, when you kind of start to to understand like the empire's role, the the Re- rebellion's role, like. Yeah, like from from our perspective, from what we're seeing, yeah, the empire not really particularly nice people. But I mean, they're 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 kind of just. You know, there's a lot of other planets that are just kind of getting along, paying their their taxes or doing whatever they have to do. And then for the most part are being left alone. It's the rebels that have come along and been like, yeah, we totally don't like having an empire. So in, to, to me, well, Luke was Luke was just like looking to, to join the empires as a pilot. Well, but he ta- he talks I mean, five minutes later about how much he hates the empire. Yeah, yeah but I, I mean, think it's, you know, it's it's a job. You get to be a pilot. You know? That's just what I was wondering. Like, is there a rebel flight academy? Like, or is he just going to go join the empire? Well, he says him and Biggs are friends, right? Yeah. And Biggs... Biggs is in the rebel. That's and that's yeah. That's what I'm wondering. Team. Like, so because he talks about Biggs on the on the Falcon. And it's like, man, we we used to. I don't know well, what it is. So says, like, there, has to be an academy, there has to be a rebel academy. There has to be a rebel academy. Yeah, I guess so. Te- teach you how to rise up against the establishment. I don't know. Maybe Solo will tell us that since Han was kicked out of the academy for having a mind. Well, that'll teach him. Yeah, that's what the trailer says. Han didn't have much of a mind. Well, I guess he, he he takes care of himself, and that's all he's good at. Yeah, all he cares about is money at first, and then he cares about the power of friendship. Yeah, and money. And money. More money. Um, more money. By by that friendship. That's right. I mean, what's wrong with money and friendship? So let's let's run down the plot of this movie real quick for for those who may or may not have seen it in a while. What plot? It's just like a series of activities until the Death Star blows up. Just bright lights, whooshing sounds, and screaming Tie Fighters. <laughs> Yeah. I'll tell you one thing is this movie is like real slow to develop. Like things happen plot wise, but it's like small things. Yeah. Like, you know, Luke meets Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan and Luke meet Han. Han and Luke and everybody go. And they fly away to Alderaan. They find Alderaan. Oh, it's not there. On to the Death Star. Small little side quest to get back off the Death Star with Leia. Now we got to blow up the Death Star. Big deal. Huge rebellion army. Big old dogfight space battle. Big thing happening now. And it's, it's a little weird to me where like the last act of the movie is like we're gonna go full in now you know what we've been doing just little things up to now this is a it's big been, deal it's been a slow burn but me and my friend here got a tank of kerosene we're about to throw on this <laughs> right well the yeah. rebels we didn't know they were getting the plans they fight. were prepared right right but it was it just didn't seem because like like the rebellion to me seemed like this is you know band of six or seven people and then all of a sudden it's like oh there's a whole rebel army with their own like designed ships and things Although, as we learn in, I guess, episode 8, the same people are selling all the ships. Well, I mean, but you, you learn in Rogue One that, you know, and obviously this hasn't happened in 1977, but you learn in Rogue One that, like, 12 hours ago, Jin and her buddies left on Rogue One against the orders of Mon Mothma, the, af- from the rebel base, on Yavin. Right. So, I mean, there's a rebel army there. They're, they exist, and they, they all wear orange. What would you well, wear you, if you were a rebel army? I don't know, not, like, prisoner jumpsuits. Probably all they have, because they broke out of prison. <laughs> Imperial prison. <laughs> Space prison. <laughs> space prison. Guardians of the Galaxy were yellow. Space Except prison. Except Drax. Well, speaking of space prison, like, I understand that, like, Leia was getting uh, spoken to with that interrogation droid and all that jazz, but, like, when Luke walks in, for a woman that's been tortured and, and, and God knows what's happened to her, she's awful, like, chilled out and irritated that he's there <laughs> like who the heck are you man it's like i've just been put through through like a, a lifetime's worth of agony and despair but who the heck are you what the heck are you doing well, i here? guess he does walk right. in a stormtrooper outfit yeah but, yeah but she's but, like aren't you a little short to be a storm right she, she she's she's so not in pain and relaxing she's like sprawled across the couch she's all what's up what's up here's some candles a little bit of potpourri and aren't you too short to be a uh, stormtrooper? I don't. Th- Here's my thing about that line: is a Luke doesn't seem that short to me, and b if you pay attention to this movie, the stormtroopers are just a completely inconsistent height. Some of them are tall, some of them are short. Meh, whatever. We're just gonna well, the, roll with it. Th- this is after they've all like the galaxy has agreed to just be like, ah, you know what, the whole cloning thing, not a great idea. So we're just gonna scrap that. 
So you have to assume there's going to be some variation in size of stormtrooper. Well, you have to be, and it's not. You have to be six foot tall to ride the Empire. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like the the uh, I don't the think armor that he was wearing was was like hanging off him or anything like that. Yeah, that's the other thing. Is like that armor fit? Yeah. <laughs> Like he's he's not the world's busiest uh, shooting boy in daddy's armor. He's he's wearing armor that fits him. Like he's wearing adult armor. Right, and he looks like an adult. He also like I I still think of Luke as being older than me. Like the way he acts and things like that. He definitely says things that like a nineteen year old would say. But I don't think that Mark Hamill looked nineteen. I don't know. No. What do you think? No, yeah, no, mm. not really. No, re- rewatching it, he, he he definitely looks younger. But that's because I just saw him like dead eye somebody and drink unpasteurized milk. So <laughs> like in his seventies, <laughs> in his seventies exactly. But like he he looks young. But I like, I'd give him like early. 20s not not yeah. much younger than that 19 is also just a hard age for me to place like i can picture a senior in high school i can't picture a sophomore in college do they have that in canada a second year at university yeah we yeah we, we would more or less we i i didn't go to university on like in canada we have university we have college they're they're two completely different institutions weird yeah right i know but that's that's how it's done here it's like a different word means a different thing that's so unusual canada <laughs> <laughs> so he was 26 when this came out. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So that's yeah. Okay. So I, I could see him them kind of because he does kind of have like a younger younger face, but like I, I wouldn't be giving him 19. He's quite the Joker. Wouldn't uh-huh. you say? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Are you, Carrie? You're a big comic book guy, and you you seem to be pretty involved. What I do can you can be? Yeah. What do you think of Mark Hamill the like public persona uh in in kind of like how he carries himself yeah just like you know his social media and like his interviews and stuff like he you know just just kind of who he is and stuff uh, he you know you know what he actually comes across now i, I kind of get the feeling that he's been kind of an obscurity for a while mm-hmm. and now all the spotlights are right on top of him right and that, i don't that's think he knows it, how to handle it <laughs> no i i don't think he's had this kind of attention since the early 80s or let, let's say up to the mid the late 80s well in in the mid to late 80s you couldn't just get on twitter and endlessly be interacting with fans no exactly like i i I, every now and then i'll I'll catch his his twitter pop up there and i'll I'll give it a quick read like it's i don't know he 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 doesn't come across as like a pedantic prick to me but i mean uh i when it it comes to dealing with like stars and all that sort of jazz i just kind of take it for what it is like it's um to me, what what they do on screen and who they are in real life are two completely different things, and I really only care about Mark Hamill on screen. For sure, exactly the same way. But he he just I feel like he's been so active in the um you know the public eye sort of. I don't I don't super keep up with like the celeb side of pop culture. Um, you know what what they're up to, but I just don't think like I think he thinks he's hilarious. <laughs> I think right. the years of playing the Joker have, in, in some way, maybe to his detriment, given him the idea that, that he may be a little bit funnier than what he is. Right. And I feel like if I ran into Mark Hamill at, like, the bar or whatever, I don't think I would be like, oh my god, it's Mark Hamill. I could never approach him. I could never talk to him. And I feel like the way he presents himself is, like, he thinks people think of him that way, and he wants to tell them that he's not. Right? But at the same time, like, you can tell that he's kind of like, I am a pretty big deal, aren't I? I'm Luke f- yeah. Skywalker. <laughs> Do, right. Do, do you know who I, I am? Do I did blow up the Death Star. <laughs> no, I, I I think he's he's very very approachable. I, I think he wants like he's okay with people coming up to him and saying, "Hey, oh my God, you're the you're the source of all my childhood dreams when I was growing up." And right, I think he likes that. But I, I think he he he's also kind of because um, when. when uh, Batman the Animated Series was going on, you, you heard very little about Mark Hamill. It was like, oh yeah, it was voiced by the guy that played Luke Skywalker. Like, that that's what he was for the longest time. He was the guy that played Luke Skywalker. Right. He, <laughs> you know, pardon me, he, he, was, he was in a little bit, he was a little bit obs- obscure, but now with, with Star Trek kind of, of coming around the way that it has over the past decade or so, um, it's a lot of attention. He wants to be out there. He wants to make himself available. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I really, I, I, it's, it's kind of hard to get a feel for it one way or the other. Do you think he's a good actor? Uh, you can be honest. Outside, like to be, if, if, if I was a hundred percent honest, man, I love him as the Joker in the animated series. I love him in the, as the Joker in the Arkham series. I love him as Luke Skywalker, and that is where my love with Mark Hamill pretty much rests. I don't. I think he's so tight, like, it, and, and maybe he's not, but in, in my brain, he's so typecast that I can't get past Luke Skywalker. Has he really um, done anything else live action, like a, a major role? 
nothing comes to the top of my head. Yeah. I think he did some stage stuff for a while. I know he was like really into brand deals. Like he did a bunch of commercials and stuff in the late 70s and early 80s like because of Star Wars and they would be like sort of Star Wars themed. Yeah. And he'll post he'll post those on his Twitter every so often and they'll be like, you know, him in Germany singing about Coca-Cola in German wearing like a, you know, gold jumpsuit or whatever. And I know he did stuff like that, but I don't know that he was ever Outside of being Luke Skywalker, like a like a movie star of any sort, he's all. I don't think he was a very good actor. I don't think any of them in this movie, except maybe Carrie Fisher, really delivered any lines in an impressive way. He has um, three hundred and nine that, IMDb me. acting credits. Yeah, well, there's a lot of episodes. Of no, Batman. that's just. That's, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna so. say. <laughs> I don't think that's individual episodes. Is, is, I think that's like things. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he was out there. Like when, when Star Wars was at its merchandising peak, like you know, I don't think he was being picked up as, as, as an actor. For some reason, I, I think I remember hearing that he wasn't really sought after because of Star Wars. Like it was, you, what movie are you going to put him in? Because they're just going to look at him and say, oh, that's that's Luke Skywalker. I don't know. I feel like Mark Hamill could have gotten away with it because he kind of has like the David Schwimmer, Josh Radner. He's just like a white dude, you know? Like he's just another white guy. He doesn't. He, he doesn't he, look like the Wicked Witch of the West. He looks no, like he, he could play typical white dude number one at the bar, sure. Right. But well, I, and, and I, don't I think know Harrison Ford got away go. with that. I, Harrison Ford got all those other roles, and he was Han Solo, who was I think a more interesting character and more memorable. But yeah, but but maybe that that was what kind of fed in into that future there. He was also Indiana Jones. Yeah. Yeah, but he wasn't Indiana Jones yet. No, but it, it was it was I mean it was a transition with Lucas. Yeah, it was it it, it kind of kept that fire going. It was I kind of get the impression that some of the, some of these actors that once Star Wars was done, it was like all right, you know, wash the hand, see you later, thanks for your work, and that's the end of it. Like Car- Carrie Fisher had a, a pretty decent career. Uh, Harrison Ford definitely had a solid career, uh, but I, I think Mark Hamill just kind of fell by the wayside. And, and I'm guy. sure that there's a I'm sure that there's a story there. Uh, Must I, be I'm hard just... being Luke Skywalker. And Harrison Ford really Maybe. was George. Lucas Lucas's dude for a while. I forgot he was in American Graffiti mm-hmm. in '73, and, th- and that was just it. Like he, he's he had like a, but and that's before Star Wars. Harrison Ford was was already somebody. He was already doing stuff uh, before Star Wars. What was Mark Hamill doing? Uh, he was on two episodes of General Hospital oh, or something like that the when career. he was like ten. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so like it's not he, he going into Star Wars he really didn't have a whole lot of anything I remember watching some sort of biography it was like one day he woke up he went to work the next day he woke up he was Luke Skywalker and then like it was just Star Wars mania everywhere so I can't imagine how that feels but I think I think that kind of hurt him in the long run for other acting roles he, outside of other stuff that we know like the, the Joker the voice of the Joker or he was he was the the TV series The Flash he was the uh, not Toy Master the trickster or whatever his character's name was. Yeah. Do you like the Flash TV show? Uh, I have fallen a season behind, but I enjoyed it. It was good, like, you know, it was pretty good TV. It wasn't anything like, terrible. I like the Flash more than I like Daryl. Oh, see, that's... I'm I'm dissimilar to you in that way. But, I, I think Arrow is the best comic book television show to ever be made. So my problem with Arrow is the first season of Arrow. I was so sick and tired of hearing about the island where everything was happening. Mm-hmm. Uh that it just I just lost interest like we, we'd be back in in the city and Oliver would be doing his thing and then I'll flash back to the island that that just kind of wore on me for for that series so I was like ah, I'm good it was cool but I was good I, I liked it when they when they threw Deathstroke in there that was pretty much the the pinnacle for the series for me well I will full disclosure I'm not super good at watching the long TV shows in fact ever since we really do- dove into movies I've taken a step back from watching TV because there's so many movies we have to watch um, but I've probably seen the first two and a half seasons of arrow and probably the first season of flash i have not given a chance to like supernatural or smallville or i couldn't watch gotham really um, i liked gotham I, I i really enjoy gotham oh man I, I i saw you'll occasionally see like some promos and some previews and stuff and i think some of the villains are really well cast um based on what i've seen in some of like the i think the acting from what i've seen in gotham is probably the best out of all of them yeah i don't like the flash because Barry is a terrible person, and like, I, I laugh because you're not <laughs> you're not wrong about that. Like, he's not right. Like, he the, doesn't the make good about, decisions. Right, and the thing about the Flash TV show is that it it feels to me like it's supposed to be friendlier than you know Arrow, which is like darker and you know Oliver killed people for a while and all this stuff. And it's like, yes, it is, but Barry keeps messing with timelines and like ruining lives, and it's all about him. And and, and willingly, person. and and he willingly does that. He he knows right. that that he is setting things into motion that he can't stop, and he, and he just 
kind, and he's warned by everybody and his brother. Right. Anyway, Ethan, you don't watch any I don't. of the shows. No, so. you're exactly right. <laughs> uh, I tend to stay away from things that are on the CW. Um, I, I, I even like There are very good Girl, reasons for that. So there's there's better TV occurring elsewhere on television, in my opinion. But I don't know that there is. There just there just is. <laughs> Like TV, like network television doesn't make very many good shows anymore. Correct, but you have plenty of channels and companies that are making good TV, and none of them are the CW. Sorry, just one man's opinion. I tried to watch Wrong Arrow. Opinion. Season one of Arrow is unwatchable. It's so I, I horrible. Could not disagree. It's so more. bad. The acting is the, bad. The script like, is like, bad. Uh, the characters are bad. The whole plot is bad. Yeah, but that's it's such a guilty pleasure. It's like, not like Thea until until like halfway through season two. The actress that plays Thea Queen, I can't think of her name. Like can't even open her mouth because she doesn't know how to act at all. It's so <laughs> funny. Like, like if you watch her, she like like there's no mouth movement whatsoever. It's just like she's the just playing it safe. The, right. <laughs> Every time I've she's talking ever like, tried to talk about Arrow, you're so just funny. like man, nah, you 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 can't just base it on the free. You got to watch like the third season. And I'm like, mm, no. If a show's not good it's, for the uh, first two years, it should have been canceled. If, oh, if, if you ever talk to somebody that's really passionate about a TV show, it always comes down to, yeah, but did you watch season three, though? No. Like, yeah, right. you wanted to vomit after season one, but if you stuck through to season three, you'd you'd be into it. No, I'm not right. watching 45 episodes just to wait till it gets good. <laughs> Well, here's the problem. Yeah, I know. The seasons are so long. That's the other reason that I can't keep up is like 23 episodes a season. That's insane. Oh, that's that's, that's what Netflix is for, man. I, I just sit on my hands. I just politely wait for Netflix to put them up. And I'm like, oh, okay. Now now when I have some downtime, but I can But it's like, if up. you tell me to watch, right. if you're like, oh, Stranger Things doesn't get good till the sex se- or sec- second season, but it's only eight episodes, then I'm like, okay, fine. Like, I'll give it that. <laughs> but if you're like, yeah, just, yeah, just watch, hours, the, first, eight, eight watch the first 50 and then you're, you're good. <laughs> then. then you're really invested in the characters because they've taken a lot of your life and, <laughs> and you're, you're forced i mean to i'm kind of convinced that's the only reason that like lost no lost is good because the first two seasons are, it's the opposite of what you're saying right, right? but then after Lost's that i first keep watching two because i'm so amazing invested. <laughs> right but then the next no, season, four seasons season are like what okay well whatever the last yeah. three seasons are like what on earth am i watching this is terrible I, I felt that way from the get-go, but I just kind of played along because that's what everybody was watching. So I was like, all right, all right we'll, we'll watch this again, I suppose. <laughs> I love Lost. Whereas, like, there Lost are plenty is... of TV shows where I'm hooked within 30 seconds. Like, like Game what? of Thrones. No, Game of Thrones is one of those things where I have this conversation with everybody where I'm like, yeah, I just don't care about any of the characters. And then everybody's like, you gotta listen. Yeah, but your, your logic for Season not caring one's about the a characters tough. is wrong. <laughs> Season one's a little rough, but season two, man, Khaleesi starts doing some crazy stuff. What's going to be over the wall? Oh, man. And I just don't care. Also, all of your favorite characters are going to die. I don't care then. This is stupid. I mean, like when you first meet Don Draper. Oh, D- that show hooks you a me- Listen, I'm I couldn't. Still- I'm still into that show, so, you know. I, I, That's what I'm saying. Is I, just, I think I just watched the pilot. Yeah, I just recently watched like right? the first five episodes again and then got hooked on something else. But I was just like, gosh, show's so good. <laughs> it is so good. Oh, uh, you know what else has a great pilot is, is on the totally different side of things is Glee. Glee's pilot hooks you right away. Are you kidding? Oh, no, it doesn't. It <laughs> sends you, you away. Yeah. It repels you to the other end of the earth. Oh, yes, it's yeah, so I'm with Carrie on this one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like y'all are... <laughs> Glee no. is Glee's Glee is a trash fire that just has just gasoline poured all over it on a regular basis. I can't <laughs> I can't handle That's it. How I feel about the pitch you know what's perfect crazy movies. about Glee? Oh, I like the pitch perfect. I like the first one. The second two suck. Um, but the thing about Glee is that like I remember watching it when it was new. Like we'd watch it on television and being like, "Wow, this is so forward thinking. This is so amazing." And the way like social justice warriors and tolerance just happen is now. If you go back and watch like season one of Glee, you're like, "Oh my gosh, you cannot say this on TV. This is so offensive." <laughs> This is so wrong. You cannot get away with this. Like this is uh uh-uh. uh this is bad. This is bad. It's so funny because I like I, I specifically remember being like, what? they just get it, man. They're so tolerant. It's, <laughs> it's so real. Well it's like you even go back and you watch Back to the Future and you're just like, guys, you can't do that. <laughs> Hide in a tree, yeah. <laughs> there there are older movies that are extremely uncomfortable to oh, watch. Yeah. yeah. And they're movies that you've seen and then all of a sudden they're uncomfortable. It's like your your worldview changes without you realizing it. Well, it, it's like like the older movies I've watched, like some of the John Wayne movies or, or like just, just old movies from the 50s or 60s where uh, the, the the wife or whatever will be, be upset about something and the husband just politely backhands her across the room. It's like, oh, oh, you, you can't... You, you can't, can just do that then. You, you can't do that anymore. 
Don't. Not only can you not do that anymore, but like it wouldn't have even crossed my like it's never like I'm having an argument with my wife and I'm like, you know what? This would be a lot easier if I could just throw you across the room, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, like when that you get upset about something doesn't you just even smack them real quick. Just, just calm right. down. See, I, I'm not too sure that my girlfriend wouldn't take the hit, just glare me in the eye and go, okay, and then just wait. And I'd never sleep again. So that would be the end of it. I'd never be I'd never be able to close my eyes because I'd know that she'd be there waiting. <laughs> Ever the insomniac. <laughs> She would just be around every corner, just just standing there, just letting me know that she's always where I'm well, going to yeah, be. It's like this is just a, waiting. This is a much. I would. Hey, Carrie, just for the heads up, I would also assume that's how she's going to be if you give your son a marble and tell him to eat it. I wouldn't tell him to eat it. You just <laughs> leave it there and see what he does. He should know if by you now. Put, not if you put stuff. him in that. You're, you're never going to sleep again if that child swallows a marble. I just Carrie, don't put the marbles on the floor. Carrie, put the cap back on the bleach. It's nothing but orders around this house. I just, it's, <laughs> it's almost impossible to live here. <laughs> put the cap back on the bleach. I thought you said cat at first, like like a feline. <laughs> <laughs> just put the put the cat on the bottle of bleach. <laughs> I was like, that's a weird place to keep your cat, but whatever. <laughs> It's it's it's, it's different up in Canada. Canada. Yeah, you got to keep your snow nice and white so you can go out and bleach it every morning. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want that ugly snow. You want that nice white Canadian snow. You know, I agree with that entirely. The center of the flag. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Snow <laughs> is one of my favorite things to look at, but like plowed snow, like old snow, <laughs> is my least favorite thing to look at. Snow. Ruins the environment. Listen, snow is nice to look at outside of the window, and that is where it is. If you're if you're inside, it's like, yeah, man, that looks nice outside. But then you got to go out in that garbage. Also, and it's not nice. L- let's just put this into perspective here. You're from Canada, where it snows all the time. It's probably snowing right now. It's it. It snowed. There's no way you know that on purpose. But yes. No, I mean, a bit, well, we uh, are we have members of our Discord and stuff that are in like Minnesota and Wisconsin. They're just like it's snowing again. And so I figured if it's yeah. snowing in Wisconsin, it's probably snowing in Canada. Uh, but whereas in Virginia, where we live, uh, we get one inch of snow when the world ends. Yeah, I caught that. I caught that. You guys really need a couple of better coping mechanisms about that. Like, it's it really just is snow. It's not just snow, man. It's 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 rear wheel drive trucks. Well, it's like it's. I know what to do with the snow because I just don't leave. Like, it, I'm not putting right. myself in the position <laughs> to be around the idiots. It can't get me if I stay in here. <laughs> like, <laughs> The most dangerous thing on the road is all those other drivers, right, man. Like, that's the problem. Well, that, that, listen, that's the same up here. Like, it, you go through, like, the summer and the fall, and it's just like everybody's driving. I mean, they're not particularly good, but everybody manages. <laughs> and then, like, an eighth of an inch of snow hits the ground, and it's just chaos. Yeah. It's just... And they, everybody buys all the bread and milk, and school's shut for... We literally... We got seven inches of snow or something like that, and they closed schools for a week and a half this year. We got like seven inches of snow. It's like, listen, uh, you're going to be in by noon, so you can sleep in, but your ass is getting in there by 12 right. o'clock. And I mean, ever, ever the, you know, I'm the son of a New Yorker and so is Tyler, but my, my dad's just like, I can't, you know, I can't f- believe all these people. They're just, the snow, the snow starts and the world ends. And I'm just like, dad, it's just, just let it go. We just don't <laughs> have the infrastructure. We like, we don't have, we don't, you know, brand new plows ready to go. We don't spend money on it because it happens once a year and we just accept that. <laughs> you, right. you, you just bite down right. hard bite, and get through you it. You bite <laughs> your milk sandwiches and you move on with your life. <laughs> milk and white bread, man. That's... I don't... I, I don't never... Yeah, everybody life. stock up on your perishables. It's snow time. <laughs> There's an eighth of an inch yeah. coming. Patting down right. the hatches. Power might go out. <laughs> <laughs> Power does go out here pretty often when it snows. You're on the grid with a fire station. Oh, I was not gonna say, your power here. should never be out. <laughs> yeah, no, my power is fine. Well, we had a we had a brief outage, and I got a, a text, call, and email from the power company all at the same time. And they were like, hey, we are so sorry. We were working tirelessly to get that put back up. And I'm like, listen, did you, you don't need to it? call. <laughs> they, they did. I got an email and a text and a call like 10 minutes later. Like, it's back, baby. Um, but... <laughs> I was like, listen, you don't need to, like, it's fine. You don't have to inform me at all about the power outage situation. I'm aware. Believe I'll it or not. It out. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, and, and the other thing is, like, if, I'll tell you what, I'll pay you a hundred less dollars a month to not tell me all this stuff. I'm not, you don't have to put the man hours in. You don't have to do any of it. You just got to take fix it the off problem. the bill, man. The cool thing about right. Virginia and its incredibly mild winters compared to everywhere else in the world is my power bill this month was $30. That's nice for you, Ethan. Mine was uh, 460 $30. Mm. My well, gas bill was that is, $1. That is, that is tragic. Yeah. 
I have a small house. Oh, ah, you gotta. I don't know what to tell you, man. You gotta get that gas heating so, going on. In there. What? How does money work in Canada? Do you have like dollars? Yeah, they have or... dollars that are. Well, have that you are ever played? Less. Okay, so have you ever played a game of Monopoly? Yeah. Okay, you know how all the money is colored differently because children are idiots. Yeah. Canada's like that. And it's funny okay. colors. <laughs> and it's all fun colors, so he just jumps out at you like, spend me now. It's, it's got a scratch instead of maple leaf, right? Is that a real thing? Uh, it, it, uh, it's actually the moose's Oh, You give it a good okay. scratch there. Yeah, it's, yeah. There's a it's, moose it's, on your money. I just want the, you to remember you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, well, there, there's a caribou on the quarter. There, there is a moose like on the on the loony on the, on the no, loony. It's a that's loon. A loony is a loon. Yeah, that's not a quarter. That's a dollar. That's a dollar. A toonie is worth two dollars, but there's a polar bear on it. Listen, man, I had nothing to do with these, these names, all right? It's just a bunch of, like, drunken Canadians got together, had a ton of beer, and was like, ah, it's called Toonie. Uh, what the hell, eh? Like, it, it's just, that's pretty much how it ended off. So, I mean, everything I know about Canada comes from Weaker Than songs, so. Ah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good yeah. sum up. Just, you know, she just, just going to, like, Spotify or whatever, listen to a bunch of Tragically Hip albums. Uh, that too, yeah. Gordon and that's Downey. pretty much your, your Canadian history lesson yeah. for the for the lifetime. Everything by Gordon Downey. So, I, yeah, Canada doesn't have, like, a history, like, in fourth grade or whatever you do when you're 10 do you have to take like ottawa history that's a place ottawa is a right? city that's a place where i live in canada yeah ottawa is the city um aha it's so in ontario. you get like canadian history it is in ontario um you get canadian history and then and, and they teach you all about like Cana- uh, the the colonies and upper canada and lower canada and how they came together and all this nonsense do you what, know who Christopher Columbus is? Uh, isn't he the guy that came from Spain and then did all the bad stuff to all the natives? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we we get a, we get oddly enough a lot of American history on top of the Canadian history because yeah, we don't get any of y'all's history. <laughs> yeah, it's it's better off that way. It's, it's a lot of fur trading. We learn about the, the and French and Indian War. <laughs> yeah, like there, there's there's a lot. Of, the the big thing in Canada when you when you're growing up for history is when they get into the War of eighteen twelve and. If you have a good history teacher, they kind of explain Canada's role in the War of 1812. If you have a garbage history teacher, it's just like, yeah, so that's when Canada kicked America's (laughs) And it's not quite the story you should be telling kids because nowadays they get on the interwebs and then they start spouting off on forums. It's just a big old sticky mess. Uh, So, fun fact about the War of 1812. uh, When I was in... Uh, I guess dual, what, pre-AP? I don't know. Advanced 11th grade history. Uh, and we would do, like, after-school quiz nights for extra credit. I think they were after yeah. school. Anyway, I would always answer the War of 1812. That was the only answer. I don't, honestly, I think later on I learned, isn't that the war that wasn't supposed to happen? Like, a text message would have solved it, but they didn't have texting. <laughs> Something right? like, the War of 1812 was, um, America had already gotten its independence from Britain, and mm-hmm. they, they were high on the hog, and they're like, you know what else would be nice on top of America? Canada. Some of that Canada land. <laughs> And uh, they started coming up. Uh, one of the big battlefronts was Niagara Falls up in Clifton Hill there. Uh, and they, they wanted to annex Canada into the American fold. And the the, the colonists that were British but were, were Cana- Canadian by, by place of birth, you know, say it how it is, however you want. Uh, They're like, nah, man, uh, you're good. you guys are good down there. Uh, we're just going to stay up here and do our own thing. Uh, don't cross that line. Don't you cross that line. And, of course, people were crossing the line, and, and that didn't go over well. Um, one of the things that kicked it off was, I think it was, uh, was it Washington on patrol? And there was, like, a minor skirmish that just kicked off the whole the whole. Sh- I think so. It, 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 I, I think it was Washington that was that was just on patrol. Like, it, it was just, they were just, you know, walking through, making sure everything's good. Uh, and then Britain got involved. Like, the big war was with Britain. Like, the War of 1812 is essentially with Britain. And Canada, as one of Britain's colonies, played a, played its part up here. But there was, like, a whole naval war going on. Like, it's... The Canadian aspect is us basically saying, no, uh, we're good doing our own thing. You guys... You guys do your own thing. Uh, we're going to do our own thing. And, and some people were more headstrong saying, no, you're going to do our thing too. And, uh, that, that's that, that's what it was. But again, if you, if you have a good history teacher, they, they kind of give you the nuance of it all. If you have a bad history teacher, it's like, yeah, man, we uh, we just be <laughs> the Americans. It's great. And it, well, it just, just doesn't translate just well. A, just a few points to make on that. Uh, Washington died in 1799. I just learned that from Google. Uh, so it probably wasn't him. No, it's, uh, it's it's somebody of significant prominence, and, and, and I just don't have the name. And then and then this is also just for all you Canadian listeners out there. Uh, the Wikipedia article of the War of 1812, the sentence that describes what it was, like the definition or whatever, 
what you would put on your note card if you were in history class uh, is the War of 1812 was a conflict fought between the United States, the United Kingdom, and their respective allies. Yeah, Canada that's... is not mentioned. <laughs> no, because at the time, at, during 1812, Canada wasn't a country. Canada didn't, didn't exist. It, it, and it wouldn't exist for another 55 years. So it really was just a Y'all colony are babies. Of, yeah, man. We, uh, you guys started in 1776, and we started yep. in 1867. Huh. I mean, that's older than Australia. Anyway, have you, have you guys thought about... Uh, Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope in a while. I hear <laughs> great things about that movie. <laughs> Is that so? Because I want you to know this conversation started there <laughs> <laughs> and just ended the War of 1812. It's fitting. So There's... that is a war. That is a war that happened in a galaxy, uh, but not the Star Wars. It happened way more recently. Uh, yes. <laughs> way... Just, I mean, just I a long time a long ago. Time ago, ago a long, a, long time is ago. a relative. A long time ago could have been like, like George could have been referring to like 1960. You know, you know as as a kid reading that cue card of of, of it, it wasn't even the galaxy far far away. It was a long long time ago, and I'm like, so 1960s, right? Not 1950. What what's a long time ago in this movie? Right, that seems awfully relative. <laughs> I remember asking my grandfather, I'm like, how long ago did we have lasers and, and force powers right. and lightsabers? Where was Long that? enough for how us to that? not have any of the technology anymore and for it all to have been forgotten after some long dead conflict that we haven't quite gotten to in the Star Wars universe yet. Mm, true. Galact- galaxy ending conflict. Also not in our galaxy from what I understand. Just the one far, far away. Well, I mean, you could safely yeah. assume that life on Earth was seeded from some Star Wars era, you know, technology. Is that how they built the pyramids? I believe so. That's what I'm led to believe, is that, that panspermia is entirely because of Star Wars. Gotcha. You know what? I'm willing to get on Twitter and just start announcing that. <laughs> Hashtag pyramids. Star Wars is panspermia. That, that all life on Earth is seeded from George Lucas. <laughs> he's the only one who knows. He's got the journal of the wills. Right. Uh, like He, he is the, the reason, Illuminati. Right. Like, the reason you hate the prequels is because... That's just how it was, man. Like it's not like it's not like he could write a story that was good. He's just telling you what happened, right? I'm not here to make it good. I'm just here to let you know what happened, man. That's it's, all. It's a 100% factual <laughs> documentary. Right. He couldn't control the actor problem. <laughs> Apparently Carrie Fisher can control herself either. So it's, it's all yeah. relative in context. <laughs> Oh man! It it can't be oh. about a real story though because it does not have Tom Hanks in it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's still one more movie in, in countless spinoffs, oh. so you, you got God. time. Yeah, one He's... more gospel. Well, announced gospel. Yeah, well, I think Ryan Johnson has already said he wants to do his own trilogy outside of the <laughs> Vader saga. Uh, sure, why not? Everybody gets their own trilogy. Right. You get a Star Wars you, movie. You get a trilogy. You get a, Star you get a Wars trilogy. Movie. <laughs> I mean, if you're Disney, right, and, like, you have J.J. Abrams coming up to you being like, I want to make three Star Wars movies. But, like, but not the middle one. Are you like, I want somebody else to do the middle right. one. <laughs> right. But, if you, like, if you're Disney, are you like, I don't know, man. Like, those don't typically make way more than they cost, and you're not one of the best directors of our time, and I don't, you know, we don't have endless funding. I don't know if this is the best idea. I don't, you're, I like, don't know. You're immediately like, of course, J.J., you can do literally like, whatever J.J., on one hand, you wrote season one of Lost. On the other hand, you wrote season Season four of Lost. Which he did not write. Season which four JJ of Lost. are we getting a here? Strike. Right. Well, the problem with JJ Abrams is that he's re- did a really good job setting up like mystery and mysticism and stuff, and then has a really bad job of like resolving it and making it of properly his, finishing. His, the his TV tie show. ups are, are not very good. Yeah. I tried to watch Alias, and it was good for like five seasons, and then it was just terrible. Isn't that how Dexter was? Don't talk about Dexter. Don't start. Just don't. I couldn't get into it. It was the, actually, it was actually the worst no ending idea. of any TV show ever. I have I've never seen the last season because I heard about the ending. I'm just like, you know what? I'm good. It's I'll, I've I'll just it's here. reprehensible. Yep. I'm going to just end on a high note and call it a day. Do, 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 do. That's how I am with Marley and Me. Like, it ends when they move to Philadelphia. Right? I've never watched a single second of Marley and Me. I'm crying thinking about it i've, I've never watched a single second of it i don't want to do that to myself i was fibbing a minute ago i i figure why go out of your way to make yourself feel miserable like that because man that dog is so cute it's like hey come spend your money cry for an hour and a half <laughs> so <laughs> like, just... are movie ticket prices outrageous in canada you seem upset about movie ticket prices i'm not gonna lie to you i, I i'm indifferent to movie ticket prices my my big hang up with with the ready player one fiasco was that um, it was a mix-up in the electronic box office that denied us the uh, opening night for Ready Player One. Um, movie ticket, they're, they're not bad, so <clears throat> I can't remember quite where the exchange rate is between our money, uh, but a movie ticket for me is around, I don't want to say $15, so Whoa! I think it comes down, if, if it was American, it comes down to like 
oh, let's just say ten bucks. Okay, that's not as bad. Yeah, I I, I don't think our Canadian exchange rate is eleven seventy three. So yeah, okay, not, so, so roughly ten bucks. Yeah. No, it, it's it's not unreasonable. Um, you're gonna want to bring a big jar of lube if you want to buy a bag of popcorn, though, because you're getting. F- when you go to buy a bag of popcorn. Oh, that's the, but, same, here. the same here. Yeah, but aside from that, it's 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 not like terrible. Like there are <laughs> theaters you can go to that's like you're paying huge dollars to go. But those are like the theaters where you can sit down and there's waiters and waitresses that bring you like a beer or whatever you want from the restaurant. It's 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 those theaters. So Everything Ethan else has those theaters. I go to an antique theater that's a hundred years old, and the tickets cost nine dollars, and the popcorn costs two dollars, and it's amazing. And I, like, I love it. It's the best. I don't thing like popcorn that Granted, much. It's a hundred years have old. Movie pass. And so it's, it's a win-win-win. Well, I'm, I'm glad there's one theater left in the world that doesn't like see it coming and then just start to salivate as you walk through the door. That's nice. That's nice that you yeah. have that one. It's I mean it's and it's like part of the historical society. Like it, it has no business showing some of the newer fancy movies that it shows because it just doesn't have the sound system for it. Mm-hmm. But uh, but I go anyway because it's I watched it's such a good my place first to be. movie with Dolby Atmos this weekend. It was, was it awesome? awesome. That's the new sound system where they can move sound all over the theater, including the ceiling and the floor. That sounds it amazing. It was amazing. It doesn't seem like that's like a breakthrough. Like it seems like somebody in the past hundred years would have been like, you know what? What if we? I know we're doing this round thing. What if we put speakers up and down too? <laughs> Well, now they have them, and there's one theater in Hampton Roads yeah. that has it. In one, one theater in one like movie cinema. I can't think of anywhere out in the Ottawa region that would have something like that. And there, there very well could be, but I don't think we have anything like that in Ottawa. They got a couple of those in Toronto. So is Ottawa not like a big? Canada's like empty, right? There's like not that many people, and it's in a gigantic country. Uh, I think our development land ratio is. 15%, I, th- I think, is where our population sits in the country. Like, 15% of the land is populated. Right. Yeah, Canada um, has 36 million people as of 2016. Yeah. We have a third of that in New York. Yeah, you are you are tight. Yeah, we're, we're literally um, 10 times that. No, they uh, they uh, are tight. <laughs> <laughs> Ottawa, Ottawa is significantly smaller than Toronto. Um, Toronto is... Toronto's amalgamated a lot of the the, uh, the area around it in, under its under its umbrella as the megacity. Yeah. And then you have the greater Toronto area around that that feeds it a nonstop stream of people. Uh, so that's like, that's that's like Hamilton that's like, and Kingston, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's part of... Yeah. Uh, Kingston's not part of the GTA, oh. but Hamilton's part of the okay. GTA. Kingston is between Toronto and okay. Ottawa. Like, if you're driving down the Ooh. highway from Toronto to Ottawa, you hit Kingston right pretty much dab in the middle. I've been to Kingston. That's the one place in Canada I've been. As long as we're sharing more fun facts about Canada, uh, the life expectancy in Canada is four years better than that of America, which is just an interesting fact for you. may have something to do with the fact that we can't just go and get a gun. I don't think that's it. I'll be honest with you. (laughs) Neither do I. (laughs) It's probably got a little bit to do with free healthcare and a little bit to do with unlimited space. Uh, the, the space is nice, but the healthcare is, I mean, you pay for your healthcare. Don't, it's, it's not free, but it's, it's free-ish. You, you pay for it through pretty high taxes, but again, again, I'd rather pay higher taxes and just be like, yep, totally need to have this leg sewn back on and walk out of the hospital with not too much of a bill. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm not sure I have an opinion on this, so I don't know if I can, but there's, (laughs) there's lots of reasons uh, why I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I don't know. There's also just a lot less people. I yeah, I've I've spent like I've I've been in uh, the states a, a bunch of times for work and all that jazz. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I like down there that I that I would prefer. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff up here that I like to have. Just to, like a, a lot of like the social programs in Canada really are just safety nets that um, sometimes you you don't even get to even if you need them you don't necessarily get them. You have to do a little bit of a song and tap dance. But it's six of one, half a dozen the other. I've 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 kind of lived on both sides of the border, so I'm I'm fine either way. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, there's you know free speech, and the average life expectancy is more than seventy years instead of you know like forty. And uh, we you know, fast internet connections, and we can produce a podcast and say whatever we want, and that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily <laughs> suck to be from either place compared to how much it could suck. Um, right. Oh no, there there is an Isle of Suck like right across the ocean. Which one? Uh, I'm pretty pretty sure if you go either way. It's true. You can go to Swaziland where the average life expectancy is 47 years. Good Lord. I have to, I have said this on the podcast before that I feel some weird compulsion to live in rural Canada. It's like it calls to me. So I, I live in rural Canada. It, it I mean, it's, it's rural rural in North America, man. It's houses, farms, houses, farms, houses, how, farms. How romanticized is it by, the, by Gord Downey? Um... How much? How many lies know, does he tell about how great it is to live in Canada? The man was like 
Canadian 100%. Yeah. The man couldn't have been happier. Like, if you watch an interview with him, he is he wants nothing more than to be a Canadian. That's it. That's That was it. If he didn't make it big, he was just happy being a Canadian. Uh, that being said, uh, there, there are some stuff where a, a lot of his, his music is, like, gives a nice, soft, mellow tone to some pretty tragic stuff that happened up here. Uh, but I, I think it's pretty, pretty on point by a man that that bleeds the flag. Does everyone play hockey? Uh, at some point in time in your life, every Canadian <laughs> plays hockey, yeah, but like not necessarily well and or on ice. <laughs> Did you play hockey? I did not. Uh, hockey was for families that had things like money. Uh, we did not. So Carrie played soccer. But oh, fun. That is, no, that is I, still the way it is in the States game. as well. Yeah, it's it's hockey. Hockey up here, every, everybody, I guess, will watch hockey or can sit down and watch a hockey game. But uh, for the most part, I think with with a lot of like new immigrants coming in, like hockey is still very prominent, but you can see it's starting to to show cracks in its wear. You know, a, lo- a lot of like, like, like soccer is really starting to get a lot heavy, like a bigger, heavier presence up here. So um, 50, 60 years from now, I'm not sure it'll be the same game. You a big Senators fan? I could give a rat <laughs> about any hockey team. I really <laughs> don't give a shit. <laughs> like, do you follow any sports? Do you follow like American football? Uh, I used to in high school. I used to be a big Buccaneers fan. Interesting. The Bucks? Yeah, man. I, I don't know, man. I just, I, I, I guess it was, I, I used to go to a friend's house and his dad always used to watch the Buccaneers. So I just started watching the Buccaneers, man. man it's it's to hard to find you. Bucks fans anywhere in the States. Uh, <laughs> I You can go to Tampa. <laughs> I no I, had, I haven't seen I haven't actually sat down and watched an, an a NFL game outside of maybe the Super Bowl in in ages, man. Like I, I just I I don't have time to sit down and watch sports. I, I just I'm I'm a pretty busy dude to begin with. I would just assume watch something. Fair else. enough. Yeah, sport watching sports was never anything that I got into. I, I played a lot of sports, but I I'd never uh, watching it was just not as fun for me. Care, what do you look like? I imagine you're bald and have a beard. Uh pretty pretty fine guess there i am bald and i do have a beard yeah but that's just from your graphic that you have as your twitter <laughs> <at me. laughs> no i um I'm, I'm a pretty big dude i guess uh, i've um i used to do a lot of power lifting um play a lot of football i used to play semi semi-professional football in canada means you're you're no, you're you're nowhere near the nfl and and because we have the cfl so you're relatively close to that um and that's i just look like a big bald guy with a giant beard and and probably bigger eyebrows than they really should be i really should take some time to trim those bad boys back down but uh, that's just a just a white dude with a ridiculous beard okay that's about exactly what i pictured so that's I'm glad i just pictured that. gord downey with a beard uh, no, yeah. no 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 you, you can't picture gord downey with a beard <laughs> oh. <laughs> the man's national hero <laughs> And Ty has no idea who we're talking about. <laughs> no, I no, not a clue. Is that like John Denver? Yeah, pretty much. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That that's kind of like a good uh, good comparison. He's like the Canadian John Mellencamp. Gotcha. He's the lead singer of a band that was like every every single one of their songs had everything and anything to do with Canada and their love for Canada or just like musical history lessons stuff like that. But he, he was he was he was a prominent musician in in Canada. Gotcha. 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 They were called the I Tragic. Think we League. are. Gosh, that's so Canadian. I think we're. Uh, I think we yeah, we're getting there. Up. We are. We are there. Uh, do we have any final thoughts on the movie? Anything we missed? Anything we need to wrap back up? I mean, like every movie we review, this is an ongoing conversation, <laughs> right? Like this is Star Wars: A New Hope. We could talk about nothing but Star Wars: A New Hope for two hours, or we could do a little of that and maybe a little War of eighteen twelve. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, what you get's what you get, you know. This isn't scripted. This is this is just what happens on Bacon and Exit C and E. I, I, th- uh, I think everybody's kind of watched A New Hope so much that I, I don't think there's. If, if you're listening to a podcast about A New Hope, you've seen A New Hope. You know what A New Hope's about. Uh, I don't think there's too much in the way of plot that you're really going to give away to anybody or that anybody really needs to know about. And and, and I feel like the the opinions are cemented. Like if we came in here and we were like, this movie's garbage. It is literally people just stop terrible. listening to the podcast, uh, right? It'd be like, oh well, these guys yeah. are just trying to trying to get a rise out of me, but they won't succeed. Unsubscribe. So I think you know we could pretty well say that it's just amazing. Um, I, I think the big talking point about a new hope is the impact it would have left on any of us that saw it when we were younger, and, and, and how that made us feel, and what that kind of led for l- led for us to get into down the road with science fiction and, and, and just our overall passion for it. Agreed for sure. So we we got to do a series rank. Well, we got to do a villain ranking. A series ranking. A we got to put it on the bacon and eggs big board, and we got to uh, give it a breakfast food. So let's Ooh, they do breakfast let's start food? with a start with a villain. How do we how do we feel about Darth in this movie? 
Oh, Darth isn't the villain. Who's the villain? Tarkin's Tarkin. the villain. Tarkin is by far I the know. villain. I, I would say that Tarkin, uh, compared to Vader... I mean, Tarkin's the one in charge of Vader, is he not? Like, He's, in, so, in the rank and scale of things? Here's my understanding, is that Tarkin... I'm gonna get as much Game of Thrones knowledge as I can out of this. Is that the Emperor commands Tarkin, but then you've got Vader, who's sort of the hand of the king. Yeah. Does this make yeah, sense? Yeah, that's, that's a good I, one. Yeah, like, that's a solid analogy. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's he's like I guess it's it's almost more clear in in the newer ones with General Hux and Kylo and Snoke, and right. those are their like direct kind of. So Tarkin Tarkin's Rolls. in charge of Star Killer Base of Death yeah. Star. Tarkin's in charge of Death Star. <laughs> I got myself confused. <laughs> Star Killer Base. I, I, I stopped there. And went, what? <laughs> Tarkin is in charge of the Death he Star. He made it because he took it from Krennic. You made this. I yeah. made this. I made this. This is mine now. <laughs> okay, so so it's kind of the exact plot of Ready Player One. What do you too. think about Grand Moff Tarkin then? I love him. I I, I, I think he's, he's, he's a solid bad guy. He's a solid. If you remove Vader out of planet. the equation, he's he's solid. Yeah, he blows up a whole planet like in front of its princess. Just yeah, just to yeah. prove a point. Well, they both did yeah. that. That's insane. Not Alderaan. They didn't both blow up Alderaan. Who? Vader was there. Yes, he was. But anyway, he blows up a so planet. So on a That's scale nuts. of between. Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face and Heath Ledger as the Joker. Where where does Grand Moff Tarkin fall? That's our villain scale, by the way, for for worst uh, vi- and best villain of all time. I I would say he's up. He's pretty close to uh, he's pretty close to the Joker. Yeah, I give him like an eight. I can agree with that. I can get down with that. Yeah. Okay, so where does this fall on our Star Wars ranking? Currently, uh, from the bottom up, I believe is it's Phantom Menace, Rogue One, Clone Wars, Revenge of the Sith, and then the Last Jedi. This is better than the last. I would Jedi. agree with that. Definitely better than the last. Jedi. Yeah, okay, Fair that enough. was easy enough. I, I, yeah, no, no questions there. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not... On, on to the big board. This is the real question. It's Do I need listen. the list from the bottom up, all 27? <laughs> no, you don't. In fact, I think you can. You, I think it's between this, Back to the Future, and Monty Python. I don't think any of the Marvel movies are in contention. No. This is I better than think... this is better than Back to the Future. Okay, so it's between Monty Python and. I mean, l- l- let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. It is not. It is not <laughs> the best movie of all time. I think it is the most timeless movie of all time. I, I would agree Monty with Python's that simply really because uh, just 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 the effect it would have had on on me or us as as kids. I would give it more than Monty Python. Well, and it's like somebody's like, oh, I've never seen Star. Star Wars, and you have the Ted Mosby reaction. You're like, what? You've never seen Star Wars? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? But like, I yeah, I feel like Monty Python is almost like a cult thing. But Star Wars is like, what do you mean? Everyone has seen Star Wars. Wars, and even like Star Wars, like Disney made Star Wars accessible for everybody again when they were like, yeah, all that other canon is just, it's just not. You just have yeah, to see Star the Wars now. is just <laughs> Star Wars, man. It's so I think we can safely put it near the top. Or at the top. Do so you think this is the best movie we've ever reviewed? I think so. Carrie, do you, is there a Marvel movie that stands out in your mind that might be better than this? Absolutely not. Uh, no, okay. there's not a single Marvel movie that I would put anywhere close to A New Hope. There's, uh, like, like I said, the, the, the effect it would have on me, if, if I was to rank like my number one movies, uh, I would have to sit down and come up with a reason... Uh, I guess maybe I liked Empire a little bit more than Hope, but I, I would be hard pressed to come up with anything that would beat them in 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 my in my list of movies. Yeah, I mean, this is in my list of top ten favorite movies of all time. This is my number one, um, at least last reported, which was like three weeks ago. So has that changed since um, you just watched this? Okay, no, but next week it might. Change. Okay, but by <laughs> all accounts, sense. from pretty much everybody who's seen them recently, Empire is a better movie. Yeah, but like. We asked our Facebook group what their Star Wars rankings were. And Carrie, our Facebook group is made up of people who are considerably younger than us, so therefore younger than you. And a lot of them, I was so shocked, had like Revenge of the Sith as their favorite Star Wars movie. I don't know how I feel. A lot of them had Return of the Jedi as their favorite as well. Yeah, and it was almost like it was like shocking, but it was also like I mean that's the new generation, you know that's that's what they want. Yeah, I guess from like a special effects, flashy, flashy, noisy, noisy standpoint, sure I can kind of get that, Uh, but I mean I'm not sure I I would go that way. Well. And I was, I wanted to make a quick point on the Marvel thing, and I've talked about this a few times. I'm curious as to how, like, my children will react. Like, will my kids like Iron Man 2008 better than A New Hope 1977? And I just don't know the answer to that question. You gotta have kids first. Like, they gotta get born first. (laughs) Right. Right, I know, like, I'm gonna have daughters, and they're gonna be like, well, I guess any kid can be into anything, I wanna make that clear, but I want kids that are into, like, My Little Pony, and Let's say Mean Girls is the greatest movie ever made. (laughs) Right, it's like, well, I guess that's, 
guess that's what we're doing with my life now. So. Fair enough. We need a breakfast food. Here I am. This is my life now. What Katie, you have a breakfast, what breakfast food, food would you give? Do I have a breakfast food? I don't know, man. Uh, I'm kind of like a steak and eggs kind of guy. And, and in, in, in the world of my existence, uh, the new hope would be my breakfast steak. I'm so surprised. I... You said steak and eggs, and I was like, this is bacon and eggs. This is what movies are. This is what breakfast is. This is the podcast. It all is about <laughs> this. Bacon and eggs. But steak and eggs, I guess the steak and eggs, what they do for breakfast in, in Great White North. Oh, uh, well, yeah, they do up here. There, there's a lot of cattle farmers. Is it not like, do you not eat poutine for every meal? That's a French-Canadian <laughs> thing. I'm not even going <laughs> to... You don't have another two is hours it, to go down that Tim road. Cort- is it Tim Horton's <laughs> coffee? Is that is that what this is? <laughs> Listen, that <laughs> is a staple. All right? My yeah, day doesn't go Tim's. anywhere until I get that cup. Roll up the rim. Oh, that's over. Oh Got to wait another couple months for that. It happens like every couple months, right? That's not, I'm not crazy about that. Like, I think I think they do it like twice yeah. a year. It feels like they do it twice a year. Fair enough. I just like, I know nothing about Canada. Like I said, everything I know about Canada comes from songs and watching hockey. Tim Hortons. And and. Ha- <laughs> I was gonna say you, you nailed Tim Hortons pretty good. I mean, I pick up on stuff. <laughs> is that like their Starbucks? Do y'all not have Starbucks? We we have st- our Tim Hortons is like your Dunkin' Donuts. No, no, it's not. If it's that important to you, it's no, not. Because you can get like you can get like. <laughs> but it's, it's like that <laughs> massive chain coffee and donut shop. I thought you got like full meals. At oh, Tim they do Hortons. donuts. You can get like a soup and sandwich. Okay, okay so yeah, like, Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, that's like Panera to me. Panera, Panera is not known for its coffee. That's true. There are better places to get. Actually, McDonald's coffee up here is actually better than Tim Hortons coffee. Yeah, isn't Tim Hortons coffee McDonald's terrible? Coffee like, is isn't garbage. that a thing? It's just it's what you drink. It's yeah. Well, it was like that for a little while, but then McDonald's came around, and I the story that I heard was that McDonald's bought the the bean the beans of Tim Hortons. Like they went to the distributor and like, yeah, you're our bean supplier now. <laughs> and so <laughs> Tim Hortons had to go to another and they supplier. Were like, Listen, J.J. Abrams, we'll give you three movies. Do whatever you want. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the golden arches come in and things change. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, but that is, it's it's not it's not great coffee. It's coffee people drink. That's that's pretty much Fair it, man. It's, you're better off to make your own coffee. Well, there we go. Home. Steak and eggs for for a new hope. I can live with that. I think it's bacon and eggs. But we okay. can't ever, we can't ever give well. bacon and eggs to a movie. I think you can. No, to you a can't. Because we're going to beat A New Hope one day. I, I think there is only one potential movie that could beat it. Yeah, well, you and I have different views. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't know, man. You're going to be like 2001 A Space No, Ops. that movie f- sucks. Are you kidding me? That is the most boring <laughs> movie. Okay, I love movies about space. I love movies about, like, realistic space travel. Like, I love them. They're my favorite. 2001 was pretty realistic, That's what I'm saying, is I love those movies. I love every movie based on 2001. It's just f***ing boring. You you don't, when you watch 2001, you don't feel, like, tense when you're outside in the vacuum of space and there's no noise. You can't, you you don't feel that tension. No, I feel like I've been watching a movie for 16 hours. (laughs) Okay. I feel like when I was eight and I went I to the movie theater to see Gods and Generals and it had an intermission. Uh, I, I felt the tension. I don't know. It's not a bad movie. It's just not my favorite thing in the world. Oh, it's, it's far from my favorite. It's it, But it's yeah. it, it's a movie that I can enjoy maybe but once a year. I'm not going to say it's better than New Hope. Oh, God, no. No, 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 no. It's, it's yeah. nowhere close. Fair enough. Hey, what do we do now? Do we I sign off? So. What, Carrie, what's next for Carrie? Well, how's Nerdium going? Uh, we got the review coming up for... Uh, Pacific Rim 2. Eventually, we'll, we'll be posting our review for Ready Player One once we get that snafu worked out. Uh, we got a, we're going to be doing a big table discussion with a couple of other guys about uh, where where Marvel's going, what we want to see, what we want to have happen, and then uh, we'll see where it goes from there. You typically, Matt and I are sitting down trying to bash our heads together, trying to come up with ideas that aren't too too repetitive. I mean, there's only so many times you can talk about video games or TV shows before people are looking at you going. That was a really nice one-trick pony you got there, Carrie. But can you move on, please? So, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. No, <laughs> yeah, I, we we reviewed 18 Marvel movies in a row. <laughs> well, we 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 uh, I think some of our episodes that that people like the most have been our movie reviews. So, mm-hmm. but we we try to like go out a little bit further than that. I know um, Matt and I are, are extremely busy, so we have a hard time sitting down and watching a movie at any given given moment, but uh, that's, that's where we are now, just trying to, to get things going. We're still uh, we're still pretty new. I think we only have like five or six episodes out there, and uh, I know one due to technical issues is practically unlistenable, so uh, I think it's the Star Trek one where it sounds like we're underwater in a tube and it's nothing but my ba- it sounds like the base of my voice has been cranked to 10 so it was a it was a unique lesson in uh audio engineering for matt yeah we've come across <laughs> some of those yeah our, our first episode on iron man is, it's is all yeah it's mixed bad wrong, he's man. really loud i'm really quiet and i went and listened to it the other day and it's just awful 
Yeah, we're, we're, did did you do a pilot before you launched that like never made it onto the airwaves? We um we tried we we had sat down at one point in time and then tried to talk for a little while and just blankly stared at each other for like 15 20 minutes we're like okay uh, break and regroup. Uh, yeah, we we uh before it was like any sort of film review, we had a we were just going to do like a two dudes talking kind of we'll see where the conversation takes us kind of thing. Mhm. And it turns out if you're not like a professional host and do that all the time, uh, the conversation takes you absolutely nowhere, and it's lame <laughs> and not good. <laughs> uh, so we trashed that and regrouped with with movie reviews. No, no, it's 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 good. I know uh, I know I've listened to a bunch of your stuff. I know Ethan has exceptional taste in movies. I do my best. Uh, <laughs> But what are you trying to say? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that that uh, I, I was raised in a very uh, Turner classic movie, uh, uh, not household so much as my grandfather just made sure that I sat down and watched them all. So, oh, I was legitimately I raised in a Turner classic movie household where we sat down on Saturday yeah. nights and watched Robert Osborne tell us about the essentials. Yeah, right. So, like, I I used to sit down and watch all the essentials. Yeah. I mean, I have some really good memories with my granddad watching those movies. So I gotta. I'm just kind of passing Ian that little puck there to say it was you know just good to hear some of the movies that if I, if if I tell somebody if somebody asked me how to spell my name and like. Oh yeah, it's it's just spelled like Cary Grant. They, oh. There's a certain age group that'll be like, oh, Cary Grant, yeah, absolutely. Brings a tear, brings uh, a that age heart. group is pretty pretty much dead now. And then the rest of people are like, who? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I would. Oh, not I love Cary. Cary Grant's yeah. like one of my top five actors of all time, <laughs> legitimately. <laughs> my, my ultimate goal for and me it, to get on the podcast as a guest is Ben Mankiewicz. He uh, my be because of my mother's uh, great love and affection for Cary Grant is is how I got my name. That's awesome. That's so cool. She she saw that name on a guy and thought that that was just the cat. And, and she also had a thing for Cary Grant and his chin, and that was that was my destiny from there on. Did you out. just say the cats? <laughs> Do you guys not say the cats? No. It's cats pajamas. Oh, okay, oh fine, God. whatever. I've so many things during the recording of this podcast. <laughs> Well, Carrie, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, my pleasure, guys. It was a blast. Uh, I, so you can uh, you can hunt us down at uh, at Nerdium Podcast on Twitter. Uh, if you got some sort of bone to pick with me or want to uh, hook up with me, you can find me uh, at the Big Bald Nerd on Twitter. Uh, you can find our podcast on Podbean. I think we're still on Stitcher, uh, iTunes. We're all we're all over the place. Just type in Nerdium Podcast, and you'll you'll get the full run on Facebook and Instagram and all that sort Unless of stuff. Unless you actively did something to remove yourself from Stitcher, you're probably still there. Yeah, then there you are. We're probably hiding out somewhere. <laughs> you're also on Overcast. I, that's where I listen to your show. Ah, there you go. Yeah, you're Overcast. on about twenty I, different directories just from iTunes alone. So. The- <laughs> There, Matt. Matt is actually uh, our guy that handles all that kind of stuff because uh, I seem to have giant sausages for hands, and technology doesn't always work for me. So he uh, he takes no. care of all that kind of stuff for us. <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't dare say that sometimes technology is a challenge. No, no, no. Well, it, it was just so easy to connect this time around. I was surprised there right. wasn't any snafus anywhere. <laughs> like like a Skype phone call. I cannot imagine. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't 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 imagine anything going wrong at at like the last oh my minute, God. <laughs> right? And starting uh, like starting yesterday, <laughs> right? Well, well, it all worked out in the end. Absolutely, guys, and and again, thank you for having me on, guys. It was it was a blast to finally get a chance to talk to you guys and be yeah, on the show. Absolutely, yeah. This was this was amazingly yeah. fun. Sometimes we haven't had a bad experience with it yet, but sometimes I worry when we you know work with somebody that we don't have like a long standing personal relationship with that it's going to just be a dumpster fire. And uh, yeah, it, it still hasn't happened. Still hasn't happened. Some wood. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. you guys are due. It's yeah, coming. We'll, it's coming we'll have for a bad you. Guest, I'm sure. Oh, I'm but... sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you can find us on Twitter at Bacon and Eggs 23, or you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at America Arlen. That's America, not Canada, but America, R-L-I-N. Uh, and you can find Ethan at on, on Instagram and Twitter at WowNow. That's W-0-W and 0-W, so the O's are zeros. Uh, you can also join our Patreon. Uh, we have a ton of awesome reward perks set up over there. It's at BaconandEggs.com slash Patreon. But if you love the show and don't want to spend any money, that's totally fine as well. We also have a Facebook group that is free for everyone forever. And it's a really, really great community over there. And we interact with both just pretty much equally. Um, we had so much fun this week. All the links to Kerry and all of his stuff are going to be down there in the doobly-doo. Um, uh, and uh, next next week we'll be covering M- Empire Strikes Yeah, Back, come, so. come listen to that. It'll be fun. Go watch that. Uh, yeah. And until next week. Do I, did I miss anything? Arrivederci. A new hope. Thanks.